What's up, party people? Welcome back to another live broadcast of the Engadget Podcast. I'm senior editor Devendra Hardwar. To my right, this way, is our reviews editor, Sherlyn Lowe. Below me is Chris Velasco of the Washington Post, formerly of Engadget, and our podcast producer, Ben Elman, diagonally. Bottom right. Hello, Hello everybody. Good morning. No, Good wrong. morning, everybody. I have not. I was away for two weeks, so sounds like you guys had a lot of fun. If you can call it that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm yep. still like dealing with like, you know, the usual. Yeah, so. pretty much everything Samsung announced uh, two weeks ago last week, uh, Sherlyn has had to review. So that is Sherlyn is in the middle of that. Um, I, I had, I had maybe three hours of sleep in the last two weeks. It's been great. I had four and a <laughs> half hours of sleep, weeks. man. Yeah, mm. the whole weeks, the whole weeks. That's her. She's just up all the time. So I wrote up something last night, the Facebook stuff, which is took up all my time too. So we're all a little tired, but we're gonna have some fun, especially because Chris Velasco is back, and we're we're gonna torture the hell out of this guy Great. today. Yeah, this is definitely what I signed up for. Wake so up, wake up. Chris <laughs> came back, and it it feels exactly like you know, when the seniors graduate from high school mm -hmm. and then Ooh. they come back like after mm. their first semester in college and all the teachers are like, hey! hey. <laughs> it's more like we're the townies. Um, we're the townies. Um, yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah. Great, love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're the townies. So Chris so is the guy who, who went off and came back and now we're like, Ugh. Hello. Hello. That's, We're going to be talking about our reviews, folks, of all these you phones. You think you're better than us now? <laughs> sure don't. I'm just, just a guy. We'll be talking about Samsung's foldables and uh, reviews of Pixel 5a, stuff we've got going on this week. And we've got some news to talk about, too. But as always, folks, um, we'll be doing a recording of the podcast. And when we do that, we cannot talk with you all. Um, but yeah, we'll have some Q&A segments. Who's in the chat this morning? I see. So Gabriel yeah. uh, shouted out that, uh, oh, hey, it's the ghost of Velasco. It's true. It's but which ghost, ghost? of Velasco's past? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> still, still in my basement. Still, still uh -huh. lit up very nicely in my basement. Uh, Ming Chong is saying, uh, <clears throat> please demonstrate the speaker, the sounds, and all of that. Uh, of, we'll of see what we can do. We will try our best, but just just note that like generally sound things don't translate well over the internet. It doesn't work. Uh, you will get a clearer look at all the stuff in Sherlyn's review videos too, so check those out. This is more hands-on. We'll be, you know, we'll point to things that people ask in the chat and whatnot. Indeed. On a quick related note, though, I, Shilin, your your Z Flip Three review is now out. It's now live, right? No, no, it's oh. not yet. Uh, I am working on some little but issues that I is? love. That this oh, the video is out. Yes, yes. So Sometimes, go watch Shilin's yeah. video. It's yeah. very good. Hmm. And I think I might uh, appear in that thanks. one too. So great. <laughs> That's why you're plugging it. Wow, I, look, you're in it. I I I did not know anything. I just thought uh -huh. you. Whenever I get sure. a random Telegram call from Sherlyn over video, I I know it's because she doesn't actually want to talk to me. It's because our video, our I shouldn't say our and Gadget's video producer uh, Brian <laughs> and wow, Brian he's o not yours anymore. Wants sir. wants uh, wants some fun footage, so I figure there's probably a little bit of me and Sherlyn doing like weird face effects and duo or something. Oh, but anyway, man, I'm it's sure fun. it's a great video. It's you should fun. totally watch it. Good to go. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Simon Phillips and Hatsune Miku. Is it the oh, Hatsune yeah, we Miku? Got Hatsune Miku in the chat. The real one. <laughs> <laughs> no. A V, what, a virtual, a Thanks, virtual pop Gabriel. idol made real. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, Ilaez or yeah, Ilaez Kosculuela as well wanted to say hi. Thank you. Go ahead. Sorry. Hello. Hello. It's okay. It's okay. I think it's only going to be a matter of time until we have a virtual pop idol like in Macros Plus uh, uh, yes. coming and tuning in and wanting to take over the world VR show. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. We are going to kick off the show in a bit. We'll be doing phone stuff, then doing some Q&A. Sherlyn has another camera set up to do some hands-on stuff, so it'll, it'll be it fun. Might not, yeah, this time it probably won't move about so much. <laughs> 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 That's a, it's how it keeps you on your toes. That's how it goes. Indeed. It's all good. Exactly. <clears throat> all right. And let me. Do, 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 do. I don't have. Actually, I don't have your title in this document. V. It is you, uh, Staff you... Writer, Washington nope, Post. Staff, <laughs> staff Writer, Washington Post. Writer. <laughs> I see. I see. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking in the thingy here. Okay. Hey, yeah, quick shout out to Jiffer. I put it in the ROS. Sorry. Sorry. Maybe. Yep. 
quick shout out to Jeffrey with a very good idea. If I was Samsung, I would take blemished units of a new product and give them to review reviewers to do a torture test of them, which sounds great. Samsung does not let anyone basically with a review unit actually beat the hell no, out of these things. No. Mm -hmm. exactly. So that's why I couldn't do any durability. Yeah, stuff. it's always a blind spot in our testing, and it's it's difficult to sort it of is. like figure out how to well, approach it. But V, do you remember the one you? time? Do you remember the oh, one time God. I did that, but with like a, a rugged S seven yes. or S eight? Well, that's, that's the point. Yeah, and you and then, dropped it then, down three flights of stairs and broke it. Well, the problem is I I Not was so still rugged. adjusting to the U S. and I thought six feet was six floors. <laughs> oh <laughs> no! Why? Um, you you no. did go to yeah you went to school in the U S. Really? How much you getting used to grad school? And undergrad, in the and undergrad, but grew up. What do you <clears throat> with the metric system? You were in the U.S. for at least four years. Over four that years. point, yeah, I know. Okay, I'm trying so to. I'm trying most to... basketball players mm -hmm. are not six floors tall. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. All right, so, that's I... good. This is good. Let's carry this energy into the mm -hmm. show. What's up, B? No, I was just gonna say, Sherlyn, I remember this happening, and so you therefore cannot be mad at me. The one time you let me borrow a Sony phone, I think it was for an, uh -huh. a gadget today shoot, and, and Mike threw it to me off screen, and I dropped it and destroyed it. Yes, yep, we're mm -hmm. even. I guess between all of us, we've destroyed plenty of gadgets. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. <laughs> That's the fun thing. All right, <clears throat> we are yeah, gonna kick it off. After it. We're good to go. My recording looks good. Let's kick off in three, two, one. What's up, Internet, and welcome back to the Engadget Podcast. I'm Senior Editor Devinder Hardwar. I'm Reviews Editor Sherlyn Lowe. Today we'll be reviewing all the phones. That includes Samsung's new foldables, the Pixel 5a, and probably some other things that we can think of because mm -hmm. uh, Sherlyn has had too many devices to review. Are you okay, Sherlyn? No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and with that, right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're not, none of us are okay. We're all very tired. But hey, check out the rest of the show. Let me do that. None of us are okay. We're all very tired, but you know, that's how, that's how it goes in gadget land. Mm -hmm. As always, if you're enjoying the gadget podcast, please be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or your podcast of choice. Leave us a review on iTunes. That's always super helpful. And you can drop us an email at podcast and Also, you can check us out on the live stream, typically Thursdays around 10 a.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel. You can join us there for Q and A's, uh, see us show off devices. Actually for this episode, Sherlyn will be actually doing hands-on, you know, coverage of these phones. So tune mm -hmm. in to us on YouTube to get some of that action. So to help us break down all these new phones and kind of what is happening in the phone world, we brought on the man, the myth, the legend, Ugh. Chris Velasco, staff writer mm -hmm. at Washington Post, a.k.a. Uh, Trader. AKA Best Buy <laughs> Store 1098 employee, <laughs> AKA Mr. Fantastic. Hello, V. How you doing? Hi, I missed you guys. Missed you too, V. How you doing? I don't know if I'll say that. <laughs> well, I we did we saw each other not that long ago. So the problem is you guys are still yeah. in the same area. Yes. Yes, exactly. But yeah, it's good to be back. It's great to talk phones. I'm there's a lot of stuff going on, and I think we're all kind of suffering a bit for it. So so much let's, stuff. let's so commiserate stuff. a little bit. Let's I commiserate. Guess hey, I'm, I'm coming off of two weeks vacation. So uh, I'm sorry, guys. Sorry. Sorry. It's been so much work for especially <laughs> Sherlyn. I don't know how it's been for V. Uh, but before we dive into the phone specifically, I did want to take a step back and just say, hey, this is the beginning of new phone season. There's a lot of new stuff to expect. Um, what you know, what is going on from both of your perspectives? Because you guys are major mobile reporters. You know, 5G was the big yeah. Thing last year what is going on this year i mean so my and i i've pitched this various times to like uh it's a matter of not being able to have the time to write it up yet i am mm -hmm. working on this story but the big trend i see and v i think you'll agree with me is that like with tensor being announced just a couple weeks ago more than ever i think consumers are going to have to like understand the differences between different types of chipsets and and mm -hmm. you know like companies owning the production process of their own mm. chips is, is going to factor into how well these phones perform. It's no longer just a Snapdragon 800 thing compared against each other till death now, at least in the mm -hmm. Android world. I mean, it, Apple has been doing this for a while. Samsung, while its Exynos still hasn't really shown up in the US, um, has seemed to improve, at least with the version that was announced at CES this year, the 5 nanometer design process. And I'm not hearing as much 
a bad feedback about the X and O's variants of the S21 flagships. Mm. I don't know if you have a different experience with that, V. Um, and then with Tensor coming up with all these performance promises that Google's, Google's making, I, I think it's all about the chips, y'all. Uh, it's so all about the chips. Free. Sure. I yeah. I know what? Huh? Okay. <laughs> My brain's gluten, broken, y'all. Gluten free. Um, you know, the chip thing is one thing because the tensor stuff, I was reading that uh, while, while I was away from the tech world mm -hmm. and that sounded interesting, but it also felt like to me that Google was just like, okay, we, we've literally done like all the major things we can to right. deliver an iPhone like experience. What the last thing we could do is build our own chips, you know, and cater our software directly to our own hardware, which right. is basically what Apple's doing. I don't, mm -hmm. I can't imagine a mainstream consumer will give an F at all about, and, you know, right. the, the it's, chip. It's more like, does this work well? Is this, you know, the yeah, iPhones, it's definitely nobody. Not mm -hmm. a sexy topic. Um, yeah. Sorry to cut you off there, but no, it's, it's okay. definitely not a sexy topic. But, but I think that the idea is that like consumers may need to, know a difference over time like is there really so anyway this is something i'm trying to find out let's not blow up my spot on this article that i'm working on i mean you um, you blew up your own spot Sherlyn. so i know <laughs> yeah. i know but it's good to get your feedback ahead of time i'm like oh this is what people want to hear about or read about yeah yeah so that's why chips are good. that's chips my are line good. of questioning yeah the chip i'm wondering about is 5g stuff because hmm. the big 5g launch i felt like was last year there was some stuff even before that but with the iphone 12 bringing 5G to the masses, that phone was hugely popular. I think Apple's last earnings report made it clear that, you know, they, they sold more iPhone 12s dramatically more than any other models. And yeah. a lot of people attuned that to being that was the first 5G one. People from Android and other platforms decided to jump onto iPhone at that point. You know, that's when I got my wife an iPhone 12 mm -hmm. uh, because, first of all, I was tired of having her on Android and we couldn't do some of the things <laughs> like FaceTime. <laughs> Um, but also, like, she, she didn't need to be on Android. Like, uh, her, she could get a phone that was really great um, with a much more cohesive experience via iPhone. So, anyway, 5G still feels like kind of a bust. Uh, even in my, like, suburb outside of Atlanta, I get, like, the, you know, I get, the like, the, the LTE equivalent of 5G. I don't get the, you know, the super fast 5G. Mm -hmm. so is anything six. changing? Yeah, so sub-6. Um, is anything changing yeah. this year? I mean, the... I I also want to hear your just your thought in general mm -hmm. about the chips and other things that are trendy in phones. But yeah, if, if you want to answer this, go ahead. Yeah, sure. I mean, just to jump into the 5G stuff really quickly. Yeah, I mean, everyone's out there saying that they're making big progress in terms of expanding their footprints. But in terms of practical benefits, I still don't get the impression that most people are really benefiting. And, and really, the expansion of 5G leads to like really weird edge cases where things that you kind of took for granted before mm -hmm. don't work mm -hmm. as well as they used to. Florence yep. Ion uh, at Gizmodo had a really kind of epic tweet thread for a while about how she just couldn't get her Verizon 5G yes. SIM to work in her phone. And she yes. just kept yeah. burning through SIM cards. And this is not like the- Literally only burning because they, they were yeah. shorting out. Yeah. Oh, Lord. We believe that was the case. Yeah. So mm -hmm. like, it's it's not like the old days where if you have a phone issue, you could just like quickly activate another SIM and just move that SIM around from device to device. That's mm -hmm. that's not a lifestyle that you can really do, at least with Verizon specific 5G configuration. Right, right, right. I was visiting home not too long ago, visiting my mm -hmm. parents for one of the first times in a long time. And I think I like a lot of people, I use my, my smartphone as like my GPS using CarPlay or Android Auto. Mm -hmm. And the number of times the I would be told that I've got full 5G coverage, but then Google Maps will say, yep. oh, your traffic yeah. data is back because you were yep. offline yep. and we just yep. didn't tell you. Like the number of yep. little things that just do not work properly is honestly yep. still kind of mind boggling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost like there needs to be a reckoning with the role of, out of 5G in America. Oh, we're not naming any names. Hey. <laughs> yeah. While we're on this subject, like I fully agree with you. I've been on T-Mobile, which I, I, I've i known for the longest time. Oh, and by the way, our parent company is Verizon Wireless. Hey. So disclosure that they don't own editorial um perspectives yep. or whatever and also Anyhow, like yeah we are in the process of being sold to another company too so it's, it's a whole thing yeah. right now we'll yeah yeah but anyhow, so I am still firmly and stubbornly a T-Mobile user, despite my parent company's uh, frequent attempts to get me to switch. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I have not enjoyed the 5G experience on T-Mobile, if only because things out of nowhere. So I switched over to a 5G capable phone a couple months ago, and I started seeing the 5G logo. And that is also exactly when I noticed that web pages started loading super slow. 
app mm-hmm. started loading, the, your internet side of things super slow. Mm-hmm. Like, I would be trying to shop for something on Instagram or just trying yeah. to browse some gadget. It would not load. So, I mean, that's my experience so far with it. But the other thing that's uh, an upcoming development in 5G anyway is a lot of uh, talk about mid-band spectrums um, and, and a lot of devices being being prepped to use those um and and questions about whether or not you should be like mm-hmm. expecting devices launched this year to have mid-band support so for example the pixel 5a which we're going to talk about at length later um does not have mid-band support and i think google was questioned about that decision hmm. and it just is it's just is weird because um no carriers are actively they have actively switched on their mid-band networks yet mm-hmm. uh and what so what would be the bring? advantage of yeah. that? What exactly. would be the advantage? Yeah. So mid-band is like slightly higher than the sub-6 uh, mm-hmm. frequency, I believe. And then, but not as good or, or high bandwidth and, and um, capacity as uh, a millimeter wave. It's not high. Yeah. It's not as high up there. So I, the idea is it should be the best of both worlds. So the waves can propagate mm. further without necessarily needing that line of sight, but still have, because they're less used, uh, more space for, for traffic and stuff. So I, I am not entirely, like, I haven't super studied up on mid bands yet, but I know that I've been hearing it a lot in 5G uh, discussions mm-hmm. with these new phone launches. V, you should probably, you, you I don't know, do you have a better understanding of mid band stuff? So I, so, not really. <laughs> I, I thought that T-Mobile had launched some of their mid-band stuff. And that's yeah, how they I thought sort of so too. out their uh, mm-hmm. sort of like broader nationwide 5G network. But mm-hmm. I mean, to your point, like you're, you're having issues. A lot of people I know across carriers, but also with T-Mobile are having just sort of data connection issues. By the way, if it ever comes up, I'm looking into some 5G stuff. So if you have experiences you want people to know about, maybe. Uh, email trying to Chris. steal our audience fee? <laughs> maybe dare email you. Chris.Velasco at washpost.com. I love and respect <laughs> all of you. That's what I want mm. to hear from you. What's that, what's that email again for, for all your fan mail? Chris.Velasco mm-hmm. at washpost.com. But you know what to do, folks. You know what to do with that email. <laughs> you know, you know um, what, yeah. yeah. What other, yes. So what other tech, because we got to get onto phones, folks. So under display cameras for front facing cameras. I feel like that's a thing I saw more and more about, although mm. none of that has impressed me. Mm-hmm. Is, is there anything else we can really look forward to? It does seem like despite the, you know, a new generation of foldables, it doesn't seem like much is actually happening on the, in the phone world this year. From a hardware perspective, I think that's probably true. Like we're still kind mm-hmm. of grappling with all of the things that companies set up last year. So yeah. 5G, the sort of shift in, in sort of form factors for smartphones, what I'm really kind of interested in tracking for, for the rest of 2021 and beyond that too, is just sort of where the industry in the United States lands because LG obviously stopped making phones. Yep. I still I still like cry myself R.I.P. thinking about R. it. R.I.P. LG. And they yeah. were like a pretty solid third behind Sam's, behind Apple and Samsung. For, for a while, but then not not recently. Less less so towards the end. Yeah. But, now, but now there's a huge gap um, just sort of waiting to be picked up. And I think Motorola's gunning for it. Google has made some big claims. Sherlyn and I both spoke to uh, Rick Osterlo, their head of devices and services. Who, he's sort of made very clear that the, the Pixel 6 is the Google phone and they're going to invest mm-hmm. in this for success. So maybe we see this yeah. landscape start to shift finally. It, it only took a decade a for like a proper <laughs> Google phone. They, they've tried this so many times. Uh, I'm old enough to remember the Nexus line, folks. I'm old, old enough to remember so, so many, so many things that they've tried. And when they bought Motorola and we're like, okay, okay, mm-hmm. cheap phones that you can customize. How about that? Eh? eh? I loved it, man. I still have my Moto. I love it. Kicking around. That, that was those a good are great. Phone. Those yeah. are great phones. I love it. I have a couple of those hanging so out. Clean. So, yeah. Hardware, not so much. I know there there was some good stuff. I think the next iOS is it 15 now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I'm beta testing the new iOS. I love some of the new features in that. So I do think software wise, we're going to see a lot of benefits. But maybe I guess for new people, like uh, with the phones coming out, we're expecting whatever the next iPhones are called. I I really don't think they're going to go with iPhone 13 as a global mm-hmm. brand name. But we're all calling it iPhone 13 now. That whole family line. Whatever else, Pixel, Pixel 6s, you know, like other new devices where they're coming this year, probably aren't going to be hugely different, I guess, hardware-wise, other than the Tensor Ooh. chips, Shrillin, right? So, 
the pixels do look remarkably different from previous pixels yeah, but but if you're so talking good. about like new features we've never seen before yeah. besides chipsets uh definitely not it's all it's yet, all under the hood right hardware. google's like right. okay yeah we, we get to do our own stuff now right mm -hmm. so yeah I, I don't know i don't know Let, let's move I, on to yeah mm -hmm. i was gonna say i just think that that's an accurate interpretation which is that like for for the next year or so, we're mm -hmm. not going to see like hardware changes be the big competition. I think it is in software that we will see companies push to to make a difference and and compete with yeah. each other. Maybe it's the thing we've been talking about for a while. Like the hardware is is kind of good enough. Like you just got to give us yeah. better software experiences mm -hmm. to really take advantage of that. Let's move on to some of these phone reviews. Um, mm -hmm. it's up to you guys. Like what pick your pick your first Samsung. You know what is really striking your fancy among these foldables. Uh, my first review of the lot, uh, which includes the Fold 3, the Watch 4 series, uh, is actually the, of the Flip 3, the Galaxy Z Flip 3. Mm -hmm. It's their 6.7 inch phone that you can fold down in half. It's got a larger external display than before. And, you know, like we usually, I like, I like to talk about behind the scenes stuff on this podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so when we when we were making the decision for me, I, I personally just felt that like it's the most interesting. I'm I want to use it the most. I would. It's the first time a phone has been a foldable phone has been priced like mm -hmm. like a mm -hmm. like a regular flagship. Um, so I just went with my gut that way. But then in talking to our other reviewer friends, like uh, you know, guests on last week's podcast, Michael Fisher and more. It looks like all of us were we're gonna start with the flip three. We're we're mostly interested in the flip three more than the huh. fold when it comes to the two. Um, but of course, listener or viewer, if you disagree, let me know. Um, that really let me just tough. say, and, I yeah, I ahead. do feel like the the flip love is kind of surprising just looking at this new stuff because we are so addicted to our phones, guys. Don't we? We're so used to just like taking our phone out of our you know bags or whatever or mm -hmm. pockets and just just looking at the screen yeah what good is a That's flip phone where you kind of have your impulse your impulse is always to have it open basically that's what i'm saying like when do you actually well, flip it close v you don't, tell me do, do you I, feel uh, differently no i completely disagree like i Same. maybe, maybe Same. it's just me maybe it's a person maybe i'm a person who just like really used to be obsessed with this stuff and now is maybe growing up a little bit like mm -hmm. i mm. am completely of the mind that I don't need to be looking at a phone screen all the time. Right. So when mm -hmm. I, what I really like about the flip three, in addition to it being a very affordable entry point for people who've always wondered about foldables, but never really got the chance to try them is, is the sort of, <laughs> not to get philosophical, but the sort of physical remove that it gives you yes. from mm -hmm. the rest of this digital world that we've steeped ourselves in, right? Like I can do yes. exactly what I need to on this. What is it? The 6.7 inch display. Yes. It works just like a regular smartphone. And then when I don't need it, when I want to just be a person again, I can yep. hold it and put it away and just it, like try and live my yeah. life. It's nice. It, it's like phone jail. You're putting yeah. your phone in phone jail <laughs> away yeah. from me. Like be gone, yeah. you devil. Yeah. Here's 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 the thing. I fully agree with V. And if if anything, it actually brings up like a, a trend both in software and this version of hardware um, that we might start seeing in the smartphone world. The the companies trying to offer means for you to disconnect and it's been happening mm -hmm. for a while right but if you think about digital well-being if you think about uh ios notification profiles that are coming up in 15 these are these are meant to help you manage your work-life balance a little bit better right and i don't think that the flip three was necessarily designed to do that that's what i'm but, saying yeah yeah but i, I mean I, I agree with you there but yeah. when you're closing the screen and you're putting it away <laughs> It does feel like I'm done. Yeah. I'm gonna focus and live in the moment for a while. <laughs> that said, that said, uh, you can also do the same by flipping over your regular uh -huh. smartphone just on its turn face. your phone, like just put put yeah, put it in, away. It Why put, are you put laughing, it, V? Uh, um, what for, for context in our video is, feed? Yeah, this is a, joke a wonderful that will not translate into the audio. Exactly. exactly. Was, so we will have to yeah. cut this part out. Um, let me just see here. <clears throat> it it seems like Samsung's big goal was uh. Uh, the phone goes click the phone goes click that's that's it that's it. now i'm not even thinking about like you know health and well-being and this stuff it's like mm -hmm. the phone goes burr basically yeah. like that that's all i'm thinking <laughs> um so how is this flip three versus the last couple of models because you guys have seen all of them is it better because of the price is it an actual good buy is it durable you know is the hardware as good as an actual rectangle phone be 
So I, Sherlyn, I want to get your specific take on some of these things yeah. because I have not done a full review of the, the right, right. three yet. But I got to say, of of as we've said, of the two foldables that Samsung announced, this is the one that most clearly speaks to me. This is what we led with in our coverage, mm-hmm. just because it's it feels like a big milestone for Samsung. And I got to say, day to day, this is the phone I've been using more, and I have very few yes. complaints. The cameras are not like yes. the best cameras in the world. So it uh, is a downgrade, right? Because they have to make some. Camera wise, they have to make some concessions to flip to be it's able to fold. It's a minor, it such a minor. Like so, yeah. in my mm-hmm. yeah, in my review, I said that um, they basically hold their own against regular flagships. So the mm-hmm. the biggest difference between this and the iPhone 12 series or the Pixel 6, 5 series and the S21 is the is that it's only dual cameras. There, mm-hmm. most other phones in this price have triple cameras. So fine, mm-hmm. whatever. Do I need the third ultra wide slash telephoto lens? Yes, not all the time. I'm not and and the digital yeah. zoom on the flip was fine. I haven't uh published my camera samples yet, but I if you watched our review video already, you'll notice uh in the video there are cuts to side by side comparisons against Pixel Five. So mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I think was the I mean my it's mm-hmm. my personal gold standard for for photos uh, on the phone anyway. V, you have you done that sort of head to head testing in terms of the Flip Three scammers? Pretty, I mean, like pretty cursory level yeah, of yeah, testing yeah. of the camera stuff so far. It's, mm-hmm. you know, for the way I kind of think about cameras now is is perhaps a little less technical than I did yeah. when I reviewed for Engadget. But, you know, I, I think the the differences in just general photo quality in, in the situations yeah. that people are most likely to use these things in. So like bright daylight, yeah. low light situations, there's... I, I would no, still minor. probably give like a pixel the edge. I mean, Google's right, computational right. photography is just that good. But exactly. Samsung in this phone is really not that far behind. They have come a long way. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really curious though. So what has your experience been like with the Z Flip 3's battery? Exactly. So I, uh, <laughs> man, I wish I could go super behind the scenes, but I don't want to break someone's confidence. So I will just say that like <laughs> all the people I've been talking to have had shorter battery life than usual with the flip three and i agree i for me it in my review i said this as well uh it can, never goes a full day without a charge uh it definitely mm-hmm. needs to be plugged in at the end of the day at the very least um if not at the start of your day so it's uh, i'm still finishing our battery test because i didn't have that much time to run battery tests on this thing um but it, it in my daily use is about like 12 ish to 15 ish hours before like i need to plug it back in depending on whether i have enabled the always on display on the outside screen Mm-hmm. And the device, despite having higher refresh rate than its predecessor, a larger external display than its predecessor, and new stereo speaker setup, it's only got the same 3,300 milliamp hour battery. Yeah. It's the same Ooh. size battery doing all these new things. So, so of course, its battery mm-hmm. life is going to suffer. But if, I also don't mm-hmm. think that Samsung was going to be able to find space to jam in more cells for this and, yeah. or a bigger cell. Let's say um, on, on a folding phone like this, too, you're probably constrained with the way you do battery yes. stuff, right? Because it all has to be in one half. If you do it on no, the it, other, is it is it spread across both halves? Yeah, Samsung did is dual battery thing. So it's mm-hmm. two little cells that are about, I think, uh, 1,250. No, my math is failing because I have okay. no sleep. But 1,150-ish, so mm-hmm. sort of. And then they add up mm-hmm. to 3,300, yeah. Okay. Okay. So they they are doing something. Are you finding that you actually have to have to fold it? Like, do, do you enjoy the folding action? Do you enjoy putting folding. it away? What? Yeah, Apparently, yeah, looking from the video, great. yeah, you enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. All I I I never have it open. V, I tell me if you're doing this differently. I never have it open. I always no, just when I mean, I'm done with. Yeah. It's just I flip it shut. The only reason I have it open right now is because I was running a battery test. And yes, when mm-hmm. I was running the battery test, I left the screen open. Otherwise, it's always closed. Yeah. I like it that way, but. V, I don't know if you've noticed this. Uh, when I when I shut it and I put it somewhere that's only ever so slightly uneven, it's slippery as hell. It just starts to like slide right off. You know, it's so <laughs> funny that that hasn't happened to me because I think everyone in this chat right now can mm-hmm. confirm that I am the clumsiest person that sure maybe are. has ever <laughs> worked it and gadget. <laughs> and I have not dropped this thing once. I'm utterly shocked. And this is before. So Samsung also sent out a little bit later, like these little Case. cases to mm-hmm. try out. Um, and I, I only just put these things on, but before that I was sort of treating this thing the way I always did, which is to say kind of like a big dummy and it's been pretty <laughs> much fine. I'm honestly very impressed. That's, a, so that's another new title on? for you, V, uh, by the way, <laughs> yeah. do you have the case? Oh yeah. So I, I did just take it off because I'm a like nervous fidgety person. 
but uh, I I gonna... I've been free balling my my. I free ball sure. as well, but the yeah. case. So they sent over like the sort of fun silicone case with the hook. Yeah. They also sent over this, uh, which again doesn't really play in the audio version, but here's the uh-huh. sort of leather version, which kind of covers oh, it's up a black this cream leather, finish. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's the, it's it, it actually folds. It's like a wallet. That's nice. Yes. It's two it's halves that just yeah. attach. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. But Mine? it's actually no, it doesn't yeah. add a whole lot of heft. It's still pretty comfortable to use with the case on, which is rarely the situation for me. Did did you get the fun case with the extra strap and the bright color option? I I got the fun case in a not fun color. I think it was like dark uh, blue. Mm-hmm. So oh, uh, mine's neon <laughs> pink for some reason. Oh, cool. <laughs> Sherlyn, cool. you said you had a fun mm-hmm. story about this this phone. So in what the so this uh this uh so in the edits or in writing this review, I wanted to describe the crease. I wanted to find a way to explain that tactile feeling of scrolling past the crease on the screen because I enjoy it. It somehow feels sensual uh-huh. to me. Uh-huh. And, uh... Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is uh-huh. like some elbow crease action. Like, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to oh, shame no, your no, kinks, no, no. but okay. No, it's, it's not, I mean, that's not my kink. But, but yeah. I mean, people keep asking, right? Like, oh, just mm-hmm. still piece on it. Look, this, at this point, we're in the third generation. They're never going away, <laughs> I feel like. And we're all fine with it. And I wanted to be like, look, if you, you scroll right past it, it, it feels sexy. So I was looking for a word to describe <laughs> this. And in my review, I wrote... Um, um, scrolling past, it feels like a soft, naked tendon. What? And then my what? editor, you know, my editor Terrence was like, "Why are you so gross?" I was like, "But it's it's exactly." I don't know if B, you agree. Then you I don't go stroking wrong. tendons I don't. for fun. <laughs> what is I this? Do. I don't know. I, I, this um, is but... how you can tell Sherlyn doesn't cook, by the way, because uh, when I think of tendons, I think of like hard cook. muscles yeah. that you have to like <laughs> I don't cook <laughs> tendons. You cook breast meat a lot. Um, no, but the word I was. I realized much later on in our second round of edits that I, I was looking for uh-huh. uh, is something else that I might not want to say on air, but it starts with the letter N um, and it's on your chest. Oh, I, I see. Uh, it, that's uh, that's kind of... It's not really I protruding. I don't it's not, think. It's not protruding. Again, again, I think elbow, elbow crease is kind of what you're looking might for. Be. Like sp- literally the thing in your body that bends v, and folds. Well, yeah, but V, what, like when you start... <laughs> yeah, tell me what you feel. I, like, I'm, I'm <laughs> physically touching this crease right and now and I do not understand. You have to like not. scroll past it. You have to like be stroking I'm, it a little I'm, bit. I'm stroking it. I'm, I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to like slowly. hit eject. Let's hit eject here, right here. <laughs> I will say, though, that I understand why people would be concerned about having a crease and what it would feel like as you're kind of flicking around it. But in my experience, because this is sort of a taller, narrower display than what some people might be used to, I honestly don't even touch it that much. Like mm-hmm. most yes. of my scrolling tends to just happen in the bottom half of the screen naturally. And my thumb yeah. mm-hmm. never gets close to the crease. Yeah, you're, you're just like, yeah, you've trained yourself to to avoid that, that one bit of imperfection. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to. I don't think that's yeah. what it was. But fine. I no, I think in general that, we all we all do the bottom half. Yeah. I I mean it's much easier, but every now and then I'll scroll past it, and it just feels so good to me. But speaking of <laughs> just using the bottom half of the display, I will say uh-huh. this: I never knew that that's what flex mode ended up being actually useful for. It. Now on the Flip Three, there's this thing called flex mode, which uh-huh. actually kind of splits the UI in half, so you have like navigational elements on the bottom half, and then like your contents actually at the top. Um, I thought this was really the way they demonstrate it, a lot of the time, they're just propping it up on a table and then like yeah. the control panels, the dial Watch some pad, YouTube the D-pad videos. on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. It's actually more useful if you're just trying to use it as like a one-handed thing. If you're on the subway, if ever, or you're leaning back on your couch. And for me, like I can't reach things across the screen because uh-huh. the 6.7 inch screen and that narrow, tall aspect ratio make it really actually hard to reach certain elements. But flex mm-hmm. mode, made it easier have you have you had this experience v i honestly haven't used it that much like it Mm. just it feels like a bit of a contrivance if i'm honestly like it's it's a reason that you can use this phone partially (laughs) folded if you want to Mm -hmm. but not like none of my like actual day-to-day use cases ever benefit from that really it it seems more like hey this is a this is kind of like an accidental thing that happens because we have this foldable right Right. so let's let's build a little software around it it looks cool. Like yeah. I think yeah. it's cool if if you were sitting in like a coffee shop and you just had this thing like propped up next to you. Yeah, I would think like, oh, we're we're kind of like in a future here, so that's cool. 
anything else you guys want to add about the flip three like especially as we move on to the fold three to me again it, it seems like excitement for the fold is kind of dying because people are like hey the, the flip is cheaper it gets mm -hmm. you some of yeah. that folding action maybe maybe we should pay more attention to that are you at all impressed with the fold three it's it's the fold 2.5, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. is that fair to say? Like, I, is, is the fold 2.5 with S Pen support? Yes, and this That's this it. is coming from a guy who was an incredible you, genius last you year. You bought it, bought, yeah. I bought a fold too, and I really like it. And like the uh -huh. the Delta and experience, it physically in terms of the hardware is so far seemingly minimal. But what Samsung really did well here, and and what I ha do have to give them credit for, is they finally got around to making the software yeah. considerably more usable like it mm -hmm. yeah. feels much more capable now one one nope. big thing to that point is now you have you have a way to force instagram to take up the whole screen <laughs> so you don't have those like blurry background yeah. things flanking either side of it in tablet modes now also the big thing I think that V was alluding to is that a lot of apps default to their tablet version now where available, um, or you can set it to do that. And you can set your default aspect ratio for apps to launch yep. in various uh, uh, configurations. So mm -hmm. that makes a world of difference when you're using that bigger screen, I think. I don't know that's if, good. if that's a main difference you're talking about, V. Mm -hmm. That's definitely part of it. And so part of this is built into Samsung's Labs feature, which is like a yes. setting menu that you can jump into and sort of right. enable different aspect ratios for some apps that don't natively support this kind of phone. And like, it definitely does help. It's not, to be clear, perfect. Instagram mm -hmm. is like the one example we keep coming back to because it's the probably the most used app that just does not know what to do with this kind of device. <laughs> and even if you switch it to like four by three aspect uh -huh. ratio, so it kind of fills the screen, like it looks good as you're scrolling through the feed, but I don't know if you've noticed this, Sherlyn, like stories <laughs> are cut off. So yeah. like it's this, still- This mm. is an Android problem, isn't it? Like we talked about this with the full two and this goes back to like our years of reviewing Android tablets. You say they go into Android tablet app mode, but that is, those don't exist. Like no, very, yeah, not, they don't, not really. Right. Right, you know, right, right, it's right. a blown yeah, up, really. it's the phone app blown up for a bigger screen, yeah. but that's it. It's not like an iPad uh, optimized version of a, yeah. of a tablet app. I, I've seen this issue with uh, three screens <laughs> in total at this point. One, the flex, uh, the flex, the fold threes uh, inside screen. Two, mm -hmm. the fold threes outside screen and three the flip threes inside screen all of them are in such uncommon aspect ratios that apps just you know <laughs> some apps just don't know what the hell to do <laughs> yeah. with it so uh, my yeah. this one app that i've been using a lot lately is settlers of Catan the game which i it's it's a it's a kind of indie not the most put together game you know so it's like and and it's that's, the only that's one of the world's most popular board game apps yes or board games in general games. and they they and then don't then the have a fully app, put together exactly. android app exactly it's it works the app works it's like it's, uh -huh. it's very it's a little backward it feels like an app from 1999 sometimes the reason i bring this up is because this app on some of these screens will like the c content disappears outside the screen sometimes so buttons that i need to press i just can't look find them because they're under like they've just disappeared they've overflowed into the, the edges. Um, mm. And so far, the Catan app is one I've seen this happen with. Um, but I'm not sure if you've seen this ever, V. I haven't run into that so much. Though, to be fair, I'm, I'm not testing the Z Fold 3 perhaps quite as rigorously as I, as I mm. would have in the past. So, mm. yeah, I'm more than happy to take your word on this one. I, I mean, I, I yeah, we have pictures of it in the video of the Flip 3 review so far. But again, like one thing, too, that you point out that tablet apps, uh, the Vendra, mm. aren't, aren't great on uh, Android anyway. I, I kind of want to make that very clear to whoever's tuning in what we mean by like a good tablet app, right? Because if you haven't used iPad OS maybe or you haven't used a good iPad tablet app but you just won't know it's it's when the navigation and and the layout is designed fully to make use of the space so like your your navigation row or column is within your fingers reach or something and and the space like you have a pane for messaging on the right but then your left can be now devoted to like the rest of your inbox and you can like scroll through them so it's like just making instead of the message taking up your entire screen and then like you still have to reach all the way to the top left to go back or something like that. So 
I think that's what we're talking about when we're talking about a well-designed tablet app. Mm-hmm. And on mm-hmm. Android, there's a dearth of them. There's, there's a, basically which a which makes the point of having like a big big screen phone kind kind of kind of pointless to me. How is the Fold Three experience? Like, is the screen better? Is does it feel better to fold? Is it does it feel more durable? Like, those are the questions I really have with this thing. It I don't know about you, Shirley. Same. Like, I I think it I think the screen does feel better. And again, this mm-hmm. is maybe because I've lived with the, the Fold Two screen for a year. Oh, for sure. Which, yeah. Which is fine. It's not a bad screen at all, but there's just it's just a little gummy. And after a while, I think anyone with a Fold 2 would probably tell you this, like the internal screen protector will, will sort of bubble up starting at the crease, at the edges of the crease, and then work their way towards the middle. So we don't know yet if that is an issue that is fixed in this. But at the very least, the screen, because of some additional uh, sort of plastic layers under there, yep. uh, does go a long way in sort of making the screen feel a bit more like actual glass. It's a little sturdier, mm-hmm. which is, again, also helpful because the S Pen, <laughs> it's very pokey. You're going to spend a lot of yeah. time just jabbing at this thing. So that I really worry. Is really helpful. I worry about the S Pen because, yeah, that screen quality does, we'll does not seem see. conducive to pokey, pokey sci-fi. <laughs> so I, yeah. I want to jump in and add to, to what V said, which is that, yes, I, I didn't use the old Fold the, the old fold 2 anyway all that much. So I can't tell you like exactly the nitty gritty of how much different it feels. But I can spell out to you the difference, which is a 120 hertz refresh rate on the screen, uh, on the outside screen now, in addition to the inside. Uh, and I know that a lot of people used to complain about the outside screen being a little too narrow. I, mm-hmm. I don't mind it. Um, but in this way, like I was trying to use the i've been using the fold 3 as a sort of main driver since Mm -hmm. i stopped finished like since i finished my review of the flip 3 basically Mm -hmm. and i realized that like neither aspect ratio really works that well for me Mm -hmm. it's kind of like there's no happy medium i kind of i way prefer my smartphone's size because it's not so tall and i don't really always want to interact with it as a tablet so that's that's kind of what I'm struggling with at the moment. Um, v, to your point about the internal screen protector bubbling up sometimes, I, I think that with the new like flexible PET protector, it, I think that's what they've done to like minimize that issue because it now stretches with the screen. We'll see. That, sure. that problem literally only started happening to me after 10 months of use. So yeah. we'll, okay. we'll, we'll see about that. that that's yeah, not bad. That's not bad for a $2,000 phone. Like it lasts 10 months. <laughs> Perfectly. Yeah. What is what is the price for the full three compared to the flip three, guys? Eighteen hundred uh, for the full three. Ugh. Right down from what two thousand was it two thousand or yeah. like nineteen? The original price was yeah. The original price was like two nineteen ninety nine nineteen eighty, but basically two thousand. You know what you can get for that money? You could you could get a Razer Blade fifteen with an Nvidia RTX thirty seventy GPU. Like you you could get so much for that money. Yeah. Uh, sure. you, could, I... you could easily buy like. Probably you could probably get a decent deal on an iPad Pro and like an iPhone 12. Like you better be able to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yes, you could. You could. You certainly could. Um, I think. Okay. I think. Mm-hmm. I, I. I think. Yeah. This is the device that's definitely more like this is two devices in one, and it's more mm-hmm. premium and, and more components, and that's why they're more. It's more expensive, and I get it. But like re- as a reminder, or in case we you don't know, the Flip Three now costs a thousand dollars as opposed to twelve hundred between 1200 and 1300 before which Mm. now i feel like it's a better price will it ever be a good price enough for mainstream i i mean yes it will there will be price Mm. drops and whatnot but like whether or not this is something you want to use as your main phone Mm -hmm. oh man it's almost there like it's so close but like i also just don't know that we need a folding Mm -hmm. phone yet yeah. yeah. Oh, after all this, after spending an hour <laughs> talking about folding phones, we get to the truth, which is what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't think we really need these things. Uh, okay. We've got other phones to talk about. Do you guys have any closing thoughts on these? Is, is that basically your main takeaway? You still don't know if folding phones are worth it? Yeah, unfortunately. And yeah, unfortunately, that still very much seems to be the case. Like these phones are great; these are the best foldables that have ever been made, and they're more polished and more ready than ever for people to actually Agreed. start using them. But they're just, aside from like the fun of being able to flip your phone closed and put it aside, or with a device like the Fold Three, being able to just like swap between relatively functional device types. Like no one's no one's really thinking about this. Mm-hmm. No one. It very much feels like a solution to yeah. a problem. People aren't really clamoring for a fix. Mm-hmm. For. 
it is Whereas, interesting and exciting, <laughs> but definitely not the most necessary in our lives right yeah. now. And the, the main problem, the S present is great. The main problems <laughs> I think of on a consumer level is battery life, which it sounds like <laughs> these things aren't that great, and durability and long term, like how long will this? Those phone are hard last? to tell right now. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. Hey, speaking of things that uh, speaking of things that nobody really actually needs, but some people might just want. I also got to play with the Tom Brown edition of all of these devices. <laughs> okay, sure. Look, okay, I'm not saying you let's, need let's it, see. but the aesthetic. Uh, the, the aesthetic, which is <laughs> it's lines. Do you, lines. Do you like it? It's, this it's is not red, lines. white, and blue lines. It's this basically not the Olympics. Interesting. <laughs> they're they're not just any all. lines. They're <laughs> <laughs> they're tom brown red white and blue lines yeah yeah i mean look i i i would just say this go check out the article that's on engadget because i also mm -hmm. managed to interview tom brown himself to talk about the collaboration what it takes to style a mm -hmm. tom brown edition of foldables <laughs> etc etc mm -hmm. so check it out but i in person i think they're really pretty so to be honest i would love to see like more designer collabs on like on tech you know on yeah. tech design well, been... because yeah, there's more. Been some. There's, there's been some, yeah, there's, but I'm yeah. saying what more now in, in yeah. phones. Like Realme, I think just had an interesting mm -hmm. collab with Naoto Fukusawa. Maybe I think that's correct. Sure. But like, yeah, in the U.S. at least, it, phone design unfortunately tends to be a little more conventional <laughs> because pe these people have to move units. They need stuff that like yeah. reaches to everybody. And I gotta almost, say, Tom mm -hmm. Brown is just like this is ridiculous. You made it's three lines. You, you <laughs> made a rectangle with three lines. You made what a rectangle. Are you, what are you doing? Like you got paid on, for that? Are you serious? Anyway, on the Galaxy but, Buds Two is basically the uh, French flag, but color reversed. I yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, Charlene's like, so you spell Tom with an H. I love it. I love it. I, I, love I it. was so confused when I found out he was American. I was like, wait, T H O N. I love your aesthetic. American? You're so unique. It's amazing. Okay, let's move on. To yes. The Pixel 5a, which a seems much more reasonable hey, price phone. Dander completely Earth's on thing. on the opposite end of the spectrum. What is up with this thing? Because it also seems like I, I read a review um, and the headline by our, you know, uh, one of our Parents managing editors, Terrence O'Brien. His title is "The 4a 5G wasn't broken, so Google didn't fix it," and that that's it. That's the review. Uh yeah, proper credit where it's due. I think yeah. our editor in chief Dana Woman came up with that headline, and it's really, really great. That's I it. love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had what does pleasure... that mean? Yeah. I had the pleasure of editing uh, Terrence's review for this one, oh. and uh, it was yeah. Uh, and reading it and and having one myself, I fully agree with him. Basically, if you look at the actual changes to the five A, um, it added water resistance. <laughs> Okay. And and I I think maybe a slightly bigger battery so that it's like insanely okay. long lasting right now. Water resistance uh, is, is good, by the way. I, I shouldn't laugh because yes. I think it it's is an essential important. feature to every yes. single phone. It's Everything much more needs. essential than wireless charging, which this yes. phone does not have. And also yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, no one well when the four A was launched, no one complained about the lack of wireless charging, but I am at least in Gadget did complain about the lack of water resistance. So mm. good good improvement here, Google. But I believe that's it because the chipset is the same, the RAM is the same, <laughs> the screen is the same, the cameras are the same. Is the design the same? Like, is it pretty, pretty much? much. There's That's a, funny. It's still kind of black. <laughs> well, so the There's four A, the four A five G was a weird device, right? Because they released the four A, and the five G came mm -hmm. like a couple of months after. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, the 4A 5G was launched with the Pixel Five a, a mm -hmm. few months later, and mm -hmm. uh, for slightly more money. But but the difference mm -hmm. is the 4A is this cheap three hundred and fifty dollars yes. phone with a six point one or six point two. I can't remember the exact dimension now inch screen. So it's a smaller phone. The 4A 5G is a little bit bigger. It's got like a six point six five inch screen. I can't numbers again. I'm sorry with the exact <laughs> details right now. Um but it also had like 5G support whereas the original 4A I believe doesn't. Um mm -hmm. and 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 then it costs like a hundred dollars or two hundred uh, actually hundred and fifty dollars more about four ninety nine. This time around the four the five A costs four fifty and and then it's the four A five G. It's a cheaper four A five G with water resistance. I don't know what else. What other differences are there, V? That's it. And frankly, that's yeah. enough. Like I love sure, it, sure. In, in it's covering cheap. in covering all of this stuff. There are two things that I absolutely love. I love 
completely ridiculous, over the top, almost concept like devices that somehow find their way to market, mm -hmm. like the Z Fold, like the LG Wing. And mm -hmm. on the other end, I absolutely love cheap, good phones. Yes. yes. And this yes. is love a it. cheap, good phone. Like yes. the Pixel 3A XL, to me, is still. <laughs> probably the best android phone of all time because uh -huh. it ran like a dream yeah android was super clean the camera was solid battery life was insane like yeah. what else does someone need and because that phone doesn't exist anymore the pixel 5a just kind of fits into where that phone left off i absolutely love this thing so i, I think for the past couple of years the a phones have been the goodbyes right like yeah yeah don't don't spend that money in the premium phone when you can get some of the last gen tech with a slightly new case and some better stuff. Like it seems smarter for most people. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's the phone that shows that like Google wants to reach the masses uh, as well. And is thinking about like, <laughs> you know, accessibility that way. Uh, I will, I will say I have an anecdote that like, for mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I was helping Terrence out with this review because we were so pressed for time, all of us and Terrence very kindly offered to review this phone on my behalf so that I don't have to be reviewing five phones at once. Mm -hmm. um, but the battery test I ran on my 5A, uh, holy crap, it lasted like 22 and a half hours on our Good. battery test. And that's the Good. longest it, you know, a phone's ever lasted, I think on our test, which is just video looping. Um, but before I gave, before I tested this phone, I was trying to run um, a, a fully complete the 4A 5G's battery test uh, for him because I wasn't able to complete it the last time around. And I went and I did the test and everything. And I was like, wait, why is the number so low? I realized I had <laughs> run my battery test on the 3A XL <laughs> instead what? of the 4A 5G. <laughs> This is how many phones I have at home with me. Wow. It really we needs have to, to declutter. We have to, to, to. So much stuff. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you look behind me uh, on our live stream, it's a, it's a mess in my office. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but TLDR, basically, Pixel 5a is good, is good, as good usual. Get, if you can get it. So, Shrillin, to your earlier Only. point about this being yeah. like a, a mass market play, that's totally true. But because of like Except. chip supply constraints mm -hmm. and just sort of the state of the world right now, this phone is only available in the US and Japan. Aww. Yep. So, yep. sorry, everybody. <laughs> That's Sorry, like uh, I, mm, I guess. I, I'm, I'm, the, yeah, yeah. That, that's like other things that are very prevalent in the U.S. right now, and that the rest of the world doesn't have. It, uh, it there, there's a lot of unfairness like, going on okay. in this country, like yeah. vaccines, which Americans aren't taking. Uh, Charlene, you yes. have one other oh. thing, which, oh. um, again, a <sighs> thing that I don't think many people are going to buy, but do you not, did look at this, not. the smartphone do for Snapdragon buy. Insiders. What what's going on? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We and when talked we talked about, about this, phone. yeah, it seemed yes. like a joke because it, it, it was mm -hmm. sadly not a joke. It was uh, not even just a concept device that Sam Snap, uh, Qualcomm was trying to do. It's it's called the Snap smartphone for Snapdragon insiders, but anyone can buy it. And I think that that's kind of why we we reviewed yeah. it because should you should you buy it? Should, should anyone? <laughs> It's a fifteen hundred dollar phone with a six point, I believe, eight inch screen. Mm -hmm. uh, that's basically a showcase for all of Qualcomm's strengths, or so it says, right? And so things like Th this, 5G... by the way, we're looking at the review here. One of the lowest scores I think you've ever given any. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to give it much lower, and then I was like, sixty-two. Wow. Well, the part of part of the reason is it was a very frustrating review process because mm -hmm. Qualcomm throughout the thing was a first of all they were like oh sorry huh, don't publish it this day publish it another day because they <laughs> cool. changed yeah love it and then and then mm -hmm. another and then you know like a week later was like oh ha, ha, sorry uh, the OTA update for the camera is not ready yet but the XO says we have this score though it's like really good and then like based on my testing is crap and they went like, no the OTA update yeah. will fix that. But none of it, like I couldn't get the OTA update until after. So you, this is, I'm not going to review yeah. a phone based on promises for you. This is when we were like, Qualcomm, you are not a phone company. This is why you are a chip, well, you know, design so, company. And yeah. to be clear, they they worked with Aces on this. So mm -hmm. Aces has made some good phones, and a lot. Sure, I think I've seen some sure. reviews that call this sort of an alternate ROG phone, which it sort of is, right? Its screen has a 144 hertz refresh rate. It's got a nice big battery that lasts it long. Um, it's got you know, it's a showcase for Snapdragon sound. It comes with a pair of uh, Master and Dynamic earbuds uh, with that price, uh, and then you got like super fast charging, which wasn't that fast anyway, but. 
and then like very the basic triple camera setup 64 megapixel main sensor and then wide and ultra wide or ultra wide and telephoto um but yeah just overall underwhelming a lot of the things that we wanted to test weren't ready like again snapdragon sound and then just i don't know that design just looks old and boring to me v, <laughs> yeah, do you, yeah. this is it is it like so, do you like it i so so quick uh point of order i have not touched this phone i've right, not right. seen this phone in person i do not understand why yep. it exists even yep. a little bit like i understand uh-huh. that Qualcomm wants to flex and show off how cool they are at you know yep. image processing and 5g and all that stuff but is this phone demonstrably better at any mm-hmm. of those things show in well, yeah yeah uh, uh well so the other thing is i was like 5g is going to be a good thing to test and then i was and then i thought about it a little deeper and i was like <laughs> 5g is going to depend on your carrier and your coverage mm-hmm. area so why am i like no I'll test it, but like everyone's experience is going to be different depending on oh, where you are man. and who you're on. So what's a, what's the, great on you, Qualcomm, for supporting 5G so well, but there's so many other factors at play. God. Yep, absolutely. So what a let me just say, dear, dear listeners, we will not talk about this phone ever again. No, like this no is this is the one time we will ever do it. But Qualcomm has in the past, like when they have big chip updates, they do these like concept devices. So like big chunky phones or like, hey, this has all of our power charging tech and this has all of our like, you know, 3D graphics tech or something just a way to show these things off. I'm not sure what what Galaxy Brain over there decided, Mm -hmm. like, let's turn that into (laughs) a phone like into again in one of the most highly competitive gadget markets like in the world, like given Apple is just like running, like doing incredible things with the iPhone. Google's trying so hard. Samsung is like throwing yeah. folding devices everywhere. <laughs> Qualcomm's like, we, we we got we got one for our insiders. Our chips still exist. Who? Forget Who? about Tensor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's God. like I I I one last mm-hmm. one quick thing I will say again. Just an anecdotal thing is um at least testing this device with a one forty four hertz refresh rate and one millisecond like uh, input um phone forced me to do things like play Call of Duty Mobile Season 6. Oh, and really? uh, Go I, on. I enjoyed it. I might be into FPS <laughs> Wait, games. is this your first oh, shooter that you've ever played? Were you I playing it on touchscreen? On, on mobile. Yeah, on mobile. Exactly. I'm just like, oh, shoot. I like shooters now. Okay. Are you a... All right. you I mean, a... I played... I played zombie shooting games, definitely, uh-huh. in the past. But like... Shirley, you know, are you a real gamer now? I think I might be. <laughs> I think you're a Garfield now, though. I'm a Velasque mm-hmm. field. Hey, Velasque Shirlin, field. one one quick question related to all this. This is part of like an initiative, right? Like Qualcomm, a chip mm-hmm. maker that doesn't mm-hmm. make phones, is trying to build up a community of people who oh. really like the chips that they make that go into phones that they don't make. Man. So, like, what can you can you? I know you've spoken to Qualcomm mm-hmm. about this at least a little bit. Like, can you can you enlighten us a bit as to why they might think this is a smart idea? I believe you are talking about the famed, the legendary, the smart dra- dragon, the smart dragon, the Snapdragon <laughs> Insider program. I can't even mm-hmm. say it right. Y'all, I apologize. My brain is sleep deprived. Anyway, One of those weeks. Uh, the Snapdragon Insiders program, very similar to Microsoft Insider or like, I can't think of what else offhand there has an insider. Like, OnePlus has its communities and forums, right? So like, I think Qualcomm looked at them and were like, hey, fans are great. We, I want some. We, we want some. <laughs> <laughs> and was like, why don't why don't we just make one and then offer some yeah. perks so that people sign up? And I believe that there are people who are into tech and spec sheets enough to be like, hell's yeah, I'm gonna sign up for this. I mean, the the lure of freebies and early testing of certain features probably also drew yeah. some of these per people. Sure. But uh, I personally have yeah. not. Don't care. It's, and also. Uh... This, it's not that exclusive. They're they're in such a weird spot because they're not even like Intel, you know, when it comes to at least getting some sort of brand loyalty. I think like mm. people will fight like, oh, my Samsung phone has a better Qualcomm chip than your Samsung phone or something. But it, it's not like their identity is built around the Qualcomm-ness of it. Um, I, I'm getting a lot of like the how do you do fellow kids meme here basically mm-hmm. with, with this whole move so hopefully oh, yeah. qualcomm thinks better do you guys have anything else to add about this or the the next gen of phones i'll just say they're coming <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> yes i i agree there will be more yes. phones there will be more I, phones I will, 
And, yeah. and, and if I'll you... also say, sorry, one last note <laughs> yeah. on that. Uh, uh, if you are a Snapdragon insider, like you signed up and like, eagerly were like, oh, hells yeah, I'm a Qualcomm fan. Please send us an email at podcast at engadget.com and, say, and why? we'll send you a care package. And say why. Yeah, please. <laughs> and also, is that, is that a, if you... a legally binding promise. No, 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 it's not. <laughs> if you spell, if you're a Tom that spells your name with an H, Sherlin wants to talk with you. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah, yeah. Like a Y and what the, the <laughs> fancy. Okay. How many? How many lines are in your designs? Does it stand for Hermes? Anyhow, okay. I am let's Hermes. Cut, let's cut it there. Yeah. <laughs> who? Who boy? We could we could just cut there, Ben. Um, let's move on to Q and A. I think at some point yeah. there we could have like a hard cut, which I think would be yeah. funny. Yeah. Yes. Let's go on to our Q and A. I did. Okay, yeah. What, so what got... fell? In your Q room, Sherlin. Yeah. Did something fall? Something fell in front of you. Was that yeah. your gimbal? In front of her? Did something no. Fall yeah. no, the gimbal's fine. I, I, I have there? no idea. I don't know. Anyway, so. yeah, so let's take a look at this Tom Brown phone. So, chat, uh, this is your time to talk directly to us if you have any questions about anything that we've talked about. So, that could be the Pixel 5a, uh -huh. could be a, the Z Flip or Z Fold. Um, could be really anything else. We'll take a look at uh, the this Tom Brown edition. Maybe we'll take a look at the watch that is right underneath here. Um, I have one really interesting question, kind of unrelated to um, this specific stuff. But Gabriel asked at the very beginning of the stream, are you guys allowed to describe the most obscene NDA you've ever signed just to get oh, a review God. unit. No, don't need to name the company. Very curious, though. Mm. Can't think of any crazy ones. I'd, we, I, honestly, we, we try not to sign NDAs if we, yeah. if we can. The NDAs themselves generally aren't bad. It's just like mm -hmm. the it's like the follow up. It's all of the little things that the PR people try to get you to do or conform to mm -hmm. that don't specifically fall under the NDA. And I think a good example is you, yeah, give me some Sher examples. Well, when Sherlin was talking about uh, reviewing the Qualcomm phone, they were like, "Oh, well, you can't publish until this date, actually." Right, and right. The soft here's a software update that you now have to evaluate after evaluating that other software. Like that is right. unfortunately. More common, common than it should be, yeah. shall we mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this. Uh, I, I interact a little bit more with different like industry companies. So tech companies know what they're doing, right? Like Samsung, Apple, Qualcomm, whatever. Um, fashion companies don't really know what all of that means. So certain bigger brand names that deal with luxury products will try to like get me to sign the most binding NDAs mm -hmm. ever. And they're like... I think I get the sense that they're they're trying to get me on the hook for the cost of the thing that they they um are sending to us, which is like fine. I mean, there's parts of NDAs that are like don't damage this willfully and that sort of stuff, or you have to pay us back. But I've I've definitely signed an NDA where it's like w w this belongs in a bank vault, and we're gonna have a messenger cuff to the thing the whole time, or you cannot touch this. And I'm just like this thing costs 1500 you know like samsung mm -hmm. regularly sends me three thousand dollar things right like mm -hmm. why are you so obsessed i don't know um yep. that's fashion that's, that's companies love to control their image because yeah. their mm -hmm. whole brand is mostly an image yeah thing is mostly an image mm -hmm. so speaking of fashion companies tom brown tom yeah tom, tom brown tom brown tom well, brownie it's really tom what you're brownie. saying ben like once people realize your entire image is built around lines and spelling your name with an h where it shouldn't be that's it everything crumbles your whole empire is gone all right i just covered up my knee i think <clears throat> we're good to go <laughs> uh, i know the angle okay. isn't much y'all but uh hang in there okay so this is the tom brown fold z fold three over on the left and we got the watch over here uh, Did somebody remind really... me who sings in the band Radiohead? Tom Tom York 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 Tom York Tom York. Tom York. Um, so this is the Tom Brown. Let's just look at the rear for now, because this is the front and it's it's screen stuff. Um, the wallpaper is nice, etc. Cetera, okay, et cetera. So um... that that ultra thin glass bit is what you think is so sensual. Wait, Sherlin, can no, you open that? No, thing no, up it's again? a Z Flip three. Oh, okay. okay. 
so in the center there is that is that a specific tom brown widget or just like yeah i said the cool. clock widget and by the way you can see Great. it's uh so i'll just connect them whatever mm-hmm. um but i like that you know they've got this like whole new pairing thing right now uh i'm gonna skip this but yes the clock widget is a tom brown specific one let me see if i can get it to <laughs> be sharp <laughs> The, I mean, the widget it's... has three lines too. Cool. Awesome. Oh yeah, wow. it's like a postage postage stamp style. And then the uh, check out the system, like all the icon pack things. Oh, those, like, oh, those icons look is so bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm oh, look, bro, at what did you do? look at Spotify. Oh uh, man, they they didn't get the high res icons. I think that's what it might be. The uh, stream. <laughs> Uh, yeah, right yeah. Now. no, it's it's a stream too, but the actual design of the icons is what I'm talking about. Ah, uh, yeah. I, there's a Tom Brown app that actually, until today, I haven't opened. So let's see. What? Yeah, what's oh, in the Tom uh, Brown app? Crack it open, bro. Yeah. So, so the chat is making fun of a needless H in things, and uh-huh. if you put a needless H in stuff <laughs> like Snap Dragon, <laughs> Snap 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 Dragon, snap. it just snap. makes it, it just ends up making you sound like you're from New England. Pocket okay, so I just want to yeah. sort of thing. I just want to tell y'all what the Tom Brown app does. Uh huh. Does it, it directly call Tom, Tom Brown? Brown shop. No, wow. it launches okay. a Tom Brown shop. All right, sure. So it it okay. is basically remember that I am rich app that was available <laughs> on the oh, yeah. store app, for yeah. nine hundred ninety nine dollars. It's basically that. But I tell you what, I I actually like the shiny edges of the Tom Brown phone as compared to the regular fold. Uh-huh. And for some what, reason, it kind of just feels slimmer because of that. What's the what? What is the materials for the shiny edges? Because those things always get uh, all scratched up if they're anodized it's, and whatnot. I'm not sure if they're anodized. I don't have the like break down the mm-hmm. uh, details of the Tom Brown devices. Um, but basically, they're physically the same in terms of like um, size and finish, right? It's just a well. When I say finish, I mean like materials and the build. Um, but just like silver Our finishes. Says and- that it looks like a Windows ninety eight theme. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Guys, I don't understand. Is this a fashion? Is this what fashion is? Is this fashion? You guess live in New York area. You I tell me. Very I live, you y'all. know where I live. You live <laughs> in Brooklyn. There's a lot of fashion going on I, down there. Not, not right. You, you need to go think. to those stores, like need, the things right outside do. your street. You know what yeah. I need to do is go outside. You need to go outside. Uh, there are a ton <laughs> of fashion stores, uh, r- literally, because I know where Velasco lives, uh, right around the corner from where you live. Maybe a lot of cool fashion. Right. What on yeah. like Flatbush Ave on Church along oh, Flatbush. Oh yeah, I guess like, that's true. Yeah, there's stuff. Hey, church is getting a target. How crazy is that? I saw that. All it's right. Pretty wild. This is, they this take is the Astro Place target away. No, that no, was not they, a target. That was no, a Kmart. It's, it's a Kmart. Oh, Kmart. They but take it's it, becoming they... a Wegmans. Yeah. Wegmans. Wait, it's, I'm so excited. That's incredible. Wait, that's seriously? Yes. I didn't know yes. about that. Yeah. That's the big news. Yeah. I'm wow. Very, we no talked about this. Yeah. Office, which is why we're like, oh, now everybody wants to go back to the office. Just Wegmans every day. Yeah, now I do want to go. I needed to hey, if it ever, if it ever, these. if the opportunity ever comes up, Wegman's uh, red mm-hmm. lentil chili, delicious. Oh, good chef, so good. Okay, so what do you want to shout out about <laughs> this uh, watch? Uh, remember, chat, you can ask us uh, to ask do questions. anything. Yeah, you can ask for anything but Sherlin's knee. Yeah, mm, please don't. I'm Would gonna run to the answer? bathroom. I will be right back. Okay. We don't have to just talk about. Tom grocery Brown. stores. We yeah, we don't have to just talk about grocery stores. We can talk about this. Um, what is it the watch for here yes so uh i i will say the um tom brown watch they're both the same size and whatnot but i like the straps that they gave so included in the box um are straps and cases as well i actually really like this one it's slimmer than the main why do i feel like i'm on qvc but anyway um <laughs> that's that's like our eventual career path we're gonna be like yeah. those guys doing live selling shows on amazon which you know might be fun sure. yeah it's already what i do anyway um <laughs> so i like Sorry. look at how much thinner this strap is i mean it's a little stiff right now because it's brand new but then you know there's also this is just so much okay it's gonna be much qu- more comfortable here's a question have you 
has anyone been through Samsung Care Plus? Dale Campbell asks, "Have has anyone been through Samsung Care Plus? They hear the customer service is bad. V? I, so I have not. I have been fortunate enough that even my, can I swear? I feel like I can yeah, swear. Yeah, no, go, go ahead. Even, even my like dumbass self who treats phones That's terribly. Awesome. Look, I, I, I don't know like what standards apply to me anymore. I don't know how, how nice I have to be on these things. Anyway, my dumbass self has treated my Galaxy Z Fold 2 pretty poorly. And it's more or less been fine. My understanding of the Care Plus situation now is that there, and correct me if I'm wrong about this, Shalyn, I don't mm-hmm. think there is like, fold or flip specific support anymore so the Z you Premier just get, mm. service is that what you're talking about or i believe so you so as part of that premier service for a while just but just by dint yeah. of buying a foldable you got access to a special support line for people who are specifically right. trained on how to support those phones and my understanding which again correct me if i'm wrong is that yeah. that will no longer exist like if you have so it, parts of it yeah parts gone. of it will no longer exist i think some mm-hmm. of the perks are going away the michelin start meal delivered to your home oh no thing. they they have, they have said those kinds oh, right. of weird That's... vip perks are still around oh might be i misunderstood when you asked that question on our briefing i from what i you you probably know better than me first of all because you actually care about these things i don't really care about <laughs> these service perk things i'm just I like cool because it's it's for the people it's for the people i i yeah, I care about things that actually make matter, like um, whether they'll give you a free screen replacement, which they've never even done in the first place. Two hundred fifty um, bucks. Yep. Yeah, it still it still requires a fee. So like then th- once I heard that, I think I checked out. I was like, if you're not even giving a screen replacement, like why why do I want to sign up for this dumbass program? So D-Man I have never interacted eight- with them either. D man seven eight nine five says that Cher would lock rock the live selling shows. I think that she would, but <laughs> hopefully tech journalism True. could can keep her uh, for at least a little while. Yes, Vinny hopefully. asks, "What is the battery life for this watch for?" So uh, it's rated or estimated to last forty hours, and honestly, the watch for has been a lot shorter. So I generally get like a day. So I get about 24 hours. So definitely not 40 hours. Um, but that's also because I'm, I've been using it fairly actively. I've either been, you know, always monitoring exercise stuff or doing, getting a ton of notifications because people cannot stop talking. Um, yeah. Or, or taking but that photos. That like, also constantly. means that you yeah. cannot stop uh, or turn off notifications for things. Yeah. So, so, so like- for example, I have do not disturb on, on right now because I, it's mirrored to my phone. So that's one of the mm-hmm. cool things about um, the Watch 4 is that One UI and Wear OS now make the phone um, and watch link a lot better. So you can see it's 40% right now. I last had a full charge at about um, 5, no, 3, 3 p.m. yesterday. Yeah. So about 3 p.m. yesterday, I took this off the charger, went to the gym. Shh, no, no, no. I meant 5 p.m. I went to the gym after work. <laughs> after work is when I went to the gym, not during work. Busted. Um, wow. Oh Good thing Terrence isn't on. Yeah. <laughs> I told him. I told him I'm stepping away for a second at yeah. 3 p.m. I mean, <laughs> listen, if you're up late working else. at 2 a.m. regularly, you know, you take your do. time when you can get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's the, 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 the chicken and egg thing is, am I, am I working, you know, staying up late because I take breaks in the midday or what? Anyway, mm. uh, that's when it got off the charger. And then let's say at not at an undisclosed time, I did track a few different exercises with this. And then, you know, we took photos of this, which means we had to keep the screen on and all of that stuff. And then I didn't, I went home and slept. So like, I didn't do anything else with it. I still have yet to do this sleep tracking. And now overnight we're down to. 40%. So it's going to last me until I have to shoot the review video in a little bit. And then I'm going to probably have to charge it again. So look, it's, it's, I'm going to say more like a day and maybe a day and change if you don't do much with it, but come on, that's not much. So are you using it with LTE? No, uh, this, this model, uh, the UV unit, I don't believe has LTE, but let me double check too. Okay. God because that it. was a, que- that was a question from <laughs> Benjamin Lockhart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then maybe to close this out, because oh, we should, we, be we gotta go. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. Uh, Jedi mind trick on you. One of our regular comments. How close or far is Samsung to creating an ecosystem like Apple in and gadgets opinion? I'll add on to that question. Do you think it's even Samsung's goal to create an ecosystem? system like apple it definitely is their goal 
I feel like. I don't know if V, you agree. Uh, I know this question was directed at Engadget and that no longer includes you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to know what you think. I, I think that Samsung is trying to do that. I think that actually everyone is trying to do that. They've seen the benefits of it, of, of being able to own the vertical. And then um, remember the second part of the question, how close are the first they part? Yeah. So, so how close are they is, is, <sighs> I don't know. I feel like that's a very broad, it's a very broad question. And, and they so like, have in, the, in different yeah. fronts, like they, exactly. They have the product. They, progress. they, yeah, exactly. Right. Like they have the product and on, and on some level they have more product than the likes of Google, right? Because they have TVs, they have, and Google has TV software maybe, but Samsung has all these appliances and everything. Mm -hmm. And if you're, you have control over what appliances go into your home, you're not a renter or whatever, you could mm -hmm. really build out a very Samsung decked out life. And I yeah. say this thinking mostly of people in Asia because sure. I'm pretty sure over in Korea there's people who are fully embracing the Samsung ecosystem. You right? don't want you to want to buy Samsung appliances, people. So just the PSA. Good, good to know. Cool. LG, LG is the one making much LG better appliances. LG has superior products. Yeah. Yes, yes, LG does. Fun. So, so either yeah, but you know they no longer have phones, <laughs> but. I do think on, on that level, maybe Samsung is close, but on the software front, they're, I think, quite far from it. The mm -hmm. V, what do you think? Sorry, I had some Slack messages coming in. So <laughs> I I thought, Slack maybe. messages. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, what do you think of the whole, like, yeah, is, is Samsung close? I, I, like I said, it sort of depends on the sort of area you're looking at. I, to your point about Samsung sort of having its tendrils in all of these different kinds of device types, that's for sure. And it's apparently maybe not the best idea to like fully buy into like the Samsung home life, but it's uh -huh. certainly something a person could do. On right. the smartphone front, I think it's probably a little closer than Apple would care to admit. Like Samsung mm -hmm. is, is kind of like the de facto android device right. maker at this mm -hmm. point google mm -hmm. i'm sure would love it if they were but they just don't have the reach they don't have the scale for Your it market right share is 1.5 percent yes it was and i think at an all-time high it was like four yeah. <laughs> percent so it's so sad like it's just not it's just not working out for them i hope it works out but whatever so on the mobile side yeah i think i think samsung is much closer than apple would care to admit for for tablets like it's it's pretty much they're the only game in town if you want a tablet that isn't an iPad and we could go on yeah. and on about the relative merits of iPads versus Android tablets. I think we probably all agree that the tablet experience Apple on is iPad better. is just a little yeah. bit better. But a hundred percent better. Absolutely better like, in every way. I, yeah. I was I was called uh many things Apple over the years at Engadget yeah. for liking Apple products and rightfully <laughs> so. I, rightfully that I liked them. But uh, uh but yeah, like it's it's kind of an all over the place thing. So uh on the whole, yeah, I think Samsung wants what Apple has and and has the ability to sort of move beyond that right. if they sort of invest wisely, which is always the big question for them. Absolutely. Why are we struggling okay. so much with this watch strap? I, I, think, I think we can move on from this. This <laughs> yeah, is this is I just like a sad YouTube channel this. right now. What is going on? <laughs> You've been called many things at Engadget, including maybe Daddy Pizza. Mm. Jesus no, I tried. I tried. That was a meeting that I wanted to, to happen, mm. but no one bit. Ugly selfie king, like ugly selfie yes. champion. Yeah. Well, I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah. You, that. You're there. <laughs> All right. We get to go. We get to go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I believe so. We need to go. So. All right. Uh, thanks, V. Thanks, V. No, cool. V can stick around if you want. Oh, oh, V you. sticking around. Yay! Yeah, hang <laughs> I'll, put sort of... down the watch. Put down the watch. What do you do? Is it still? I'll just right. sort of hang okay. it quietly for a day. Away, oh, uh, yeah. You can move team. that out of the way. You could end yep. the stream on that phone if you want. Yes. There we go. Whoa. Put that on a shirt. All righty. <laughs> that went better than our past over our past Oh, yeah. No, that, okay, cool. that did way better, and it's because it was less droopy, and the knee was covered. Okay. All right, let's okay. do this. Rest let's of the go. show. Okay, yeah, we're so we're gonna go on to other news. Oculus, that, remember, yep, other you news. Can, you can continue uh, talking about stuff, uh, whether or not it's relevant to um, what we're talking about. I'm going to be looking at the chat, making sure that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm not interesting it, that you say. Is I'm also not sure if we'll have time for Q and A after, but we'll see because we we went. That was 20 minutes of fun yeah, time. That was, yeah, that was yeah, uh, that was a while. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get to go. Let's move on to some other news, and uh, I got a I got a weird one 
for you guys. Um, Facebook has announced Horizon Workrooms, which is a VR meeting place. And uh, this is pretty wild. Uh, I wrote it up for us in Gadget, and I think I've seen a bunch of spins on like VR collaboration and like, you know, basically recreating in person meetings. Uh, a company called Face- uh, Spatial has been doing that for a while. Uh, this thing is Facebook's spin on it, and I, I just really dug it. So I'd recommend uh, go check out the trailers for this thing. Um, it runs on the Quest 2. Um, I basically mapped the edge of my desk, and when I hopped into this meeting demo, um, my virtual desk was right where my real desk is, and that's something I just always love. Like that, that basically mix of the real and virtual worlds always feels good when I'm in VR. Um, and I looked around, and there are other journalists, like former, you know, uh, uh, guest on the show, Scott Stein from CNET. Uh, we were all just sitting around a table just chatting and it was using Facebook's uh, hand gesture technology, um, like finger recognition technology on the quest too. So we could actually, you know, speak like we normally do. I could throw a thumbs up to somebody. It was all really cool. And it just reminded me that, man, I miss in-person meetings and uh, yeah, I'm missing out with you guys, but I miss being in a meeting space with other people, like collaborating together, working together, building Mm -hmm. something together I never get that feeling on a video chat. You know, a video chat, if it's a couple people, sure, maybe it can be fun. Like when we plan this podcast, I I enjoy doing that. But if it's like five to 10 people, if it's a whole group of people, there are a lot of problems with video chats when it comes to collaboration, right? Video chat, all the audio comes in on one channel. You know, it is hard to make eye contact with people. Right. And that is kind of something VR solves because when I put on this helmet, I'm in this virtual world, Everybody, um, it uses spatial audio. So everybody sounds appropriately far from me as they should. So somebody sitting next to me would sound pretty close. Scott Stein was several uh, seats away. He sounded really far. Andrew Bos- Bosworth, the head of VR at Facebook, was like way at the other end of the table. And he he sounded even more distant. So it felt very mm. real and natural. And like you get a sense of like actually being in space. And I'll, tell, uh, I'll tell you guys this. At one point, um, we had a surprise guest pop in. Mark Zuckerberg himself, uh, he sat in the seat right next to me. And that is when it, shit started to get really real, I think. Like, that is when I was like, oh, this is this is a little awkward now. Because I can't just, like, with my avatar, like I would maybe in an MMO or something, I can't just, like, look at him or stare at him because then it's like you're staring <laughs> at an actual person, right? And I also had to be like, this is the fifth richest man in the world, right? I should be, I should not make him fool of myself. So I was like, okay, keep my hands cool you know pay attention to him uh you try to be respectful uh there is some footage that will not be shown in public uh unfortunately or thankfully for me of just zuckerberg talking and me right next to him basically doing these wild vr hand gestures uh because uh the finger tracking technology was not super accurate at times like i was typing on my keyboard but it looked like i was doing interpretive dance next to him so you know (laughs) there are pluses and minuses of holding meetings in vr sherlyn What's up? You have a question. Did did you did, did it do eye tracking? Is that why you couldn't just kind of shift your eyeballs towards Zuckerberg? No, no, to kind of it see? doesn't. It doesn't do eye tracking. So in real life, you could be like, you could look in the vague direction of somebody, but right. look at something else. But in VR, it's just like where your head is pointed is where the you know dead virtual the eyes view, are pointed. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, yeah. like eye tracking tech is something they're working on VR. Eventually, that could be added to this. Um, I'm just saying I spent an hour in this thing and I really enjoyed it. It was nice because mm-hmm. I got to sit down basically next to other people. Um, and I've, I've done this a couple of times with other like VR demos, but I just really enjoy this experience. And there are people from all over, like there are people in California, of course, but there was Scott um, in New Jersey. There were some developers of this in London and we were all just talking with each other, chatting naturally. It was like I, I had like a magic meeting room, you know, where I could talk to anybody. Um, and the the whole setup also feels like, a, you know, a startup office or a startup meeting mm. room to die for. Because like you were looking out over you know the lakes and the mountains of the Pacific Northwest and you had beautiful furniture. It just felt like really perfect as a meeting space. And I hope, uh, yeah, I hope to be doing more of these. Uh, it's opening up in public beta today for anybody with a Quest 2. Um, and it's supporting yeah. countries that where the Quest 2 is sold. You can also join via video chat, which is the other thing too. Like, so mm. you create a Workrooms account. You don't need a Facebook account. You don't need an Oculus account to basically jump into one of these meetings. So that also makes me think they're like trying to 
trying to make it uh, a little more open so that even Facebook haters will like come and give it a shot. But of course, if you mm -hmm. want to use the Quest 2, you need not you need a Facebook account, which is a big downside of that headset for a lot of people. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know if you guys have any questions, but it looks cool. I'd recommend you go check out some check out my coverage. We've got a trailer in there. I didn't get to do a video of this one, but you know some of the stuff we've already seen in that trailer just looks really cool. Jeff, I, I my, oh, sorry, go ahead, Sherwin. My main question is: uh, the trailer looks like it's you know graphic rendering. Do you have? It, it, was the space you were in when you describing the view and everything? Was mm -hmm. it like photorealistic? I mean, nothing is photorealistic, but this okay. is, it's the quest. You know, it, it looked really yeah. sharp. It looked like decent quality. The uh, you know I had to build an avatar, and the avatars look a little cartoonish, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but. It looked, it's clear because it's a Quest 2, which is a pretty, it's a 90 hertz refresh rate. You know, it's a pretty sharp high resolution VR headset. It doesn't have the highest field of view, but it, it looks good. Right. So right. being in that world, like, sure, it's it's not the, the most perfect thing, but I think it looks really cool. Oh, the other thing, it can also mirror your entire PC monitor. Um, so mm -hmm. there's a button, basically there's an app where you can stream oh, your desktop cool. into VR world. So I had my keyboard in front of me, I had my mouse. Um, if I had specific oh. keyboards, like if I or if I was using like the Apple Magic keyboard, Compatible. it could actually yeah. see the actual keyboard in VR. Um, I didn't, so I, I hit this button to get virtual pass through, so I could see like a camera view of my right. actual keyboard and mouse. But I could I could sit there and I could go on Slack and I could take notes in Evernote, just like a real meeting. It was great. So you could be distracted by your work <laughs> at your work meeting. I love it. Yeah, it's perfect. Put, put, One a, more... put work in my work. One more, one more uh, thing before I let V say mm -hmm. what he has to say uh, is that uh, one observation <laughs> that our video team, I believe Julio Barrientos pointed out, is that uh, these characters in these trailers have no legs, no lower half. You don't, of the you body. don't have You're a, not wearing you don't pants. Have legs. What do you need legs for? Or now legs. you don't have to hide any knees, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> now, but this is true. This is, uh, th this is all above board. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, it's fine. Uh, another cool thing is that. Uh, there is a virtual whiteboard, which is basically mm. infinite. Like you could just huh. get up and like start like sketching out ideas and brainstorming and doing things like with people. And it goes on for as long as you want. I believe the rooms can hold up to 50 people. Uh, some of the, you know, some of them look like just meeting rooms, but some of them look like uh, seminar rooms or classrooms from college. So you can have somebody mm. doing a presentation up front. I just think it's really cool. And it really speaks to Facebook's new ambition to be basically a metaverse company. I believe Zuck uh, went to went on CBS News this morning to like talk about this whole thing too. Um, yeah, I should. I, I wonder if they even use the footage from our meeting. Um, but this is what Facebook wants to be. You know, in it's really interesting because I was surprised Zuckerberg appeared at all. He only came in for like ten minutes, but he talked about his vision for it and what he wants, and it made me realize like he is genuinely excited about this and this is true whenever i see him talk about vr or he comes to the oculus conference or something like this is the future he wants to build but also he's the guy who's like built this incredibly huge social network and is still failing to reckon with the issues around that so i, I think it's two things you know in a way like he has this huge responsibility to make facebook a big thing but what what he really wants to do is build like a cool virtual world and not like deal with any of the problems of Facebook. So I don't know. I'm of two minds about like his, his sense of responsibility around this stuff, but this looks cool. Um, last year I talked about Facebook horizons, which is a similar thing. It's kind of in this family of virtual worlds, but that's meant to be like a VR playground. And the big issue there was, Hey, there's, there's no way like police um, safety or make sure people are being safe and not harassed. And Facebook didn't really have mechanisms for community control. This one is just a focus slice of people in meetings. You know, it's a, it's a couple of folks in meetings. If somebody is being a jerk to you and harassing you for some reason, like if you are guessing into something, you can report them. That's cool. But it's not like a big virtual world. It is a self-contained room where you could just sit and chat with people. So it's a small start, but I think it's really cool. And uh, yeah, if you have a Quest 2 and you have some friends with Quest 2s, uh, it may be worth uh, checking this out. This is, uh, what is the full name? The This is Horizon Workrooms. The beta launches today. Dave, I have a very specific mm -hmm. question for you about this. So it seems like a really potentially cool workplace tool. And you and I have talked a bit before just about how we miss just being around people and like briefings and events are just more fun when you're sitting next to your friends and you're all exactly. kind of learning stuff at the same time. Exactly. But yeah. did you ever get the impression while you were trying this out that the sort of facsimile of that experience somehow made the pain and longing for the actual <laughs> real thing more acute. I mean, probably, 
probably mm-hmm. it's sort of like man when uh, when the pandemic started and we were all a lot of us were locked down and working mm-hmm. from home like video chats were like a release right a way to like you know at least be somewhat social and i think this is kind of there too but sure i'm always going to miss like n- especially right now not being able to like have a normal real meeting with people but realistically you know th- this is almost there and also mm-hmm. <clears throat> the logistics for meeting with people in person if they're across the world or across the country it it's tough and mm-hmm. now we're looking at things like environmental issues in general i do think um <clears throat> flying is going to be something we think of differently moving forward because the world is on fire and one thing we could all do is try to fly less to help okay should we <clears throat> yeah i think that's a clean cut for the next yep I just need to drink some water. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I let's can take... go to Taliban. <coughs> Chris Blastfield NFT. Mm-hmm. No. No. <laughs> who who made okay. that? Is that Mark Dell? Mark Dell gets Yeah, that yeah. Mark, yes, Mark Mark would Dell. be the one who owns that NFT. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's do Taliban. Yeah, let's do the Taliban. Let's see how that goes. <clears throat> okay, throw it is good. Let's move on to some. <clears throat> we already said that. Moving on to some other news, there are just other a couple other things I want to highlight. Also related to Facebook, um, it seems like things are going pretty badly in Afghanistan right now, mm-hmm. following America's like sudden departure from the country. The Taliban is like quickly taken over the civilian government. They took Kabul in only a few days. Things are pretty bad, and one thing Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and other social networks pretty much have to deal with is how they look at and how they handle a lot of the Taliban-related content, including stuff from members of the group. You know, there there is a high-profile spokesperson for the Taliban who's on Twitter. He had 361,000 followers uh, when I wrote up my piece, and Twitter is saying that um, it's not going to be removing people who are are directly related to the group. Um, They also said like, oh man, uh, people in Afghanistan are using our platform to stay safe and whatnot. Mm. Uh, Whereas Facebook and YouTube are more directly saying like, yeah, any, anything tied to the Taliban because um, you know, under U S law it's been sanctioned as a terrorist organization. Um, Yeah. We're we're not going to allow anything like that. So no policies are changing, but I think just looking at how, the world is changing so quickly. It is interesting to see like what these companies have to do. Like what is their responsibility as the vectors for getting information for people, you know, for millions of people, for billions of people in Facebook's case. And it seems like when something like this happens, like these, these companies almost have to do the things that states have to do, you know, that countries have yeah. to do when it comes to blocking certain groups or sanctioning certain groups and things like that. So it's interesting to see. I wrote up a bit of that, and I'm sure like um, we're, we're going to see even more of that moving forward. I'm not our social media expert, but yeah. I do look at our, you know, I do look at like how social media companies are responding to these things. And this seems like yet another test for them. And in a time where they're already like proving themselves not able to handle vaccine misinformation and like the spreading of other extremism, extremist content. This seems like a pretty important test for all these social networks. I don't know if you, do you guys have any thoughts on this? V, go ahead. Cause mine's a, <laughs> sort of a different note. Yes. Well, mine is too. I, I think the one thing that I've sort of been struck by, and this is something that we've mentioned in some of our coverage is that, you know, just the way that the Taliban presents itself across the social media channels that yep. will allow them just, it it's remarkably, it's well done. Like they're they a right? well run organization, which is scary, you right. know, because the they can where, use these tools. Yeah. To the point where at least some people believe that there is like a PR firm involved in all of this. Mm. I, I don't know if that's uh, correct. We, we mentioned that in some of our reporting, uh, but so far we don't know any of the specifics around that. But like, wouldn't it be crazy if this, if some of the same firms that, you know, push products to people on social media mm-hmm. are the ones kind of implicitly helping this regime kind of expand i mean reach. that that's not that's not unusual right we've talked no. about this before but uh hey ibm sold databases to the nazis you know that is a history that is part of that company and I, database I, I, technology I, that was used to, to i think basically yeah. Register people. yeah it's it's real say, it's the same deal yeah 
I was gonna say that I think it's uh it's a little bit different to do PR for a company versus sell like databases, but in you're both peddling products, your product so it's, if it's, your product yeah. is PR, so yeah. Um yeah. there's two things I wanted to to say really quickly about what V said. Number one, mm -hmm. when you say in our reporting we cover this, let's be clear, you mean Washington Post. I mean I the got yes. confused for a second. Yes. I do mean the Washington Post. <laughs> Somebody works for a real newspaper. Right. That Look, and gadgets, and gadgets legit. You guys gotta it's great. <laughs> I know. We're all the I, same. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't really, yeah, I, I, yeah, you're right that they do also seem very polished. My note on this mm -hmm. uh, thing that you were talking about, Devendra, is about how uh, all these social media companies have a lot to reckon with right now. Um, not to equate the two, uh, because I don't think there's similar level of, of, of severity or, or grand scale of, you know, country being torn down. But I think Facebook and Twitter were also recently in the news for being the tech support to Lizzo's trolling issues, which mm -hmm. again, as not for as long as celebrities have been on social media, there have been like trolls coming after them. We, you know, from way back when it was less mm -hmm. dog. Um, but yeah, no Lizzo, you know, recently had a breakdown. I think it was on TikTok or Instagram stories and uh, there were people coming at her. And then, yeah, apparently Facebook and Twitter have been good at disabling accounts that will say, as awful, awful. They things. should be like this. Is this is the responsibility for any platform? Because if you make yourself a good social platform, that's e easily for people to chat with each other. It's easy for people to throw abuse around, and it is your responsibility to stop that. You know. And and I, I will that. say that I think Reddit in recent years has taken a turn for the better, where like the communities mm -hmm. there feel less toxic. There's better rules. Every subreddit now has its like rules and etiquette guidelines at the top, that sort of thing. It doesn't sound to me like it's necessarily a Reddit first thing where it was from an internal effort. And it sounds more like they just had community managers who, you know, it were from the subs themselves who stepped up to be mods and good mods at that. Um, but but anyway, it, there's just a lot of ways I think that social media can approach these things. And it's just it's just important more than ever, like you're saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's move on to, to I guess, a bit of lighter news. I'm going to talk about CS first, actually, because yes. I want to save the yes. most fun thing for the last. But there was <laughs> news this week that the CS says it's requiring vaccination yeah. um, to attend the 2022 show, which is a thing that is apparently still happening. I don't, do you guys have feelings about this? Because I do have, I do have a sense. It is currently August 19th. This show is... <laughs> over four months away and we are looking at a fifth wave of you know coronavirus going through because of delta um who knows what this fall will look like who knows what this winter will look like i yeah. don't even know if i don't know if it'll be safe at all even if you say you're going to make people prove vaccination um that doesn't help and with flying there that doesn't help with staying in vegas mm -hmm. and like who knows that you're at your hotel like it doesn't solve the big problem but what do you guys think be here's look i i have my thoughts about vaccines i i think everyone should do it whatever it's personal opinion i i i cannot imagine a scenario in which the cta can effectively manage that number of people like yep. we know with the security at ces like unless unless you have to upload proof verified proof of vaccine status as part of your registration, which for all they, like I haven't looked into it, maybe they're doing, but like mm -hmm. if they're relying on having the guys at the door check <laughs> cards or pictures on phones, A, look, we know these vaccine statuses mm -hmm. are relatively easy to fake if you really wanted to. B, mm -hmm. There's there's like 15 of those guys, comparatively speaking, like mm -hmm. we have so far out with like there is no scenario in which this uh -huh. works the way they want it to. Am well, I crazy? Realistically, I think if they did it, it would be part of your registration. Right. So it would be a thing. You wouldn't get a badge if they couldn't verify it. But that's the other thing. Like it is easy to fake if you're submitting a, you know, a front and back photo of a card. You could you could buy a fake card and submit it and nobody would know. And because, to Devendra's yeah. point, too, there's so many off-site events at CES that, like, yes, a bad yes. photo could go mm. to and mingle with non-registered attendees. Uh, and, it, it, I mean, for us, like, let's say, V, you're attending CES or 
and imagine that it, it was still in gadget for or whatever um not all of our events are going to be at the show floor or at sands or whatever right sometimes you had to go to an off-site hotel to be like oh they're doing this cool activation dinner thing or mm -hmm. hey the party at night is going to be at uh, the brooklyn bridge bowl place again um are you going to not attend those just because they might not be ces attendees only or vaccinated mm -hmm. attendees only if and if you do go and there's so, just so happens to be someone there that is sick mm -hmm. Then it CES is a super spreader event. It, all it takes is one person they and were, one unsanctioned event. They were so lucky that the 2020 CES was not was not a super spreader event. It was not it, super it is, spreader. It was definitely a spreader. <laughs> I mean, it's always like a spreading yeah. event of yeah. some sort of like flu or disease exactly. or whatever. I have taken to basically never touching, like never shaking hands. Uh, yep. I always wipe my hands. I always I didn't wear a mask when I used to go to CES, but th yeah, it seemed like probably to. we all should have been. Um, but yeah, that's how I avoided it. There yes, were definitely people yeah. who got sick because of last CES. It wasn't like a huge uh, super spreader event for coronavirus. It easily could have been. And it seems like they're just mm. tempting fate now. Like, well, hey, yeah. let's try it again. Yeah. We'll take bets now whether CES 2022 is still going to go ahead as an yeah, international how do we, how do we show. Because I, I'm definitely not going to <laughs> go if it's international. I don't, I don't I feel mm. like that's even worse. That's certainly even worse. Like, that, that seems harder to be. I, I have a feeling they're going to be stubborn about this and do the Mobile World Congress route where they do it and like it or, a, uh, a couple of thousand people go and that's it. Right. And there's no news and it's completely unimportant and irrelevant. But or you can cover everything remote. Yeah. True. V, you were saying. Mm -hmm. He's looking at Slack. <laughs> no, I'm not looking at Slack. I was okay. just, I was, no, I was reading the, the CTA's statement on this whole thing mm -hmm. and it says, basically nothing of value like yes we, mm -hmm. will, we will require you to prove your vaccine status if you want to go to ces in person but there is no insight into how that process works mm -hmm. like yep. if, if it's part of registration great tell us that mm -hmm. yeah the fact that they're not specifically saying anything leads yeah. me to believe that a they haven't they possibly haven't figured it out yet they haven't or mm -hmm. b they will default to the potentially easiest and most sort of effectable way to do this which is to just have guys at the door checking cards and stuff which i sincerely hope they do not do but it's the cta so literally who knows sometimes <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. all right well something fun yeah. now then yeah <laughs> something fun this is you this is all you this thing isn't something in gadget covered but it happened <laughs> no. uh i think this week only fans everybody's favorite patreon alternative um is now kind of making it okay or making it possible for you to have a nude free experience <laughs> if you're not familiar with only fans uh -huh. and and to be clear i am not very familiar with only fans myself uh it's where creators um can you know offer subscription programs to their content often this content is of a you know, lots of we're we're, we're all adults here, Shilin. Come on, yeah, we, yeah. We know. We know. It's, it's porn. I, yeah. I, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or 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 you know, it's according to the CNET mm -hmm. article. This is uh the the wording they use is that it's a company infamous for news. So how about we go with that? It's it's pretty clear people <laughs> are like posting uh, PG R rated content on here. But anyhow, OnlyFans is now. Mm -hmm pushing for a nude free experience and so it seems like y you know anyone can have an only fans and not have people mm -hmm. expect you to publish nudes i almost which... yeah it, it sounds like it could be like a cameo like competitor but through or live streams yeah or hmm. patreon yeah. patreon is a different thing right because it could be like yeah, yeah patreon it could be tied to anything a podcast any work you do right. but it is in that vein because what is cool about cameo is that uh you know you you pay somebody a couple hundred bucks and somebody it's you like uh, usually like right. a b or c level actor they send somebody a message and that's it it's like it's an easy transaction i got um uh what was it a mother's day message for my wife from brent spiner and that was totally <gasps> right. worth it that was totally worth yeah. it. Yeah. Absolutely worth it yeah. because she loves him and she loves data. So like that sort of thing, there, there is clear give and take between the fans and what the, the talent is producing. I'd imagine something yeah. similar here for this. Yeah. 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 So anyway, basically, uh, once OnlyFans becomes PG friendly, you'll see more people on there, uh, I think. Uh, and I'm not saying who. 
<laughs> Maybe if you all are big fans of Chris Velasco, you should suggest he starts an OnlyFans with no nudes. <laughs> I mean, what what makes you think I don't already? Can I? Yeah. Oh, that would just be online gag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I was trying to not say or do, considering your reputation. Being- Only gadget oh, fans. It's- yeah. Only Ooh. gadget oh. fans. Oh, oh somebody buy that yeah. URL. Buy that domain. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're done. All right. I think that's a good cut. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Let's uh let's save ourselves from this discussion. Let's move on to what we've been working on. I am I'm I'm doing a lot of stuff. I was up really late working on that Facebook thing. Um, I'm also reviewing the Razer Blade 14, which is the new AMD powered Razer gaming laptop. Uh, it is a little smaller than the Blade 15, but I think more capable than the 13 inch uh, Stealth Blade, uh, Blade Stealth. Hmm. That's what that one is called. So I'm really interested in seeing how this thing performs. I just need more time to play with it. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, I may be reviewing the game 12 minutes, which I've been looking forward to for quite a long time. So that all sounds cool. Shulin, are, are you doing anything beyond dying from phone reviews? Uh, and dying and more dying from phone reviews. So I am currently testing the, well, the Z Flip reviews up today. And then I'll have the Watch 4 review up shortly. Mm-hmm. And then I'll have the full 3 review up shortly so as you can imagine three or four reviews or yeah whatever in 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 a week is not great or fun to do but we'll have them up and that's what i'm working on and then also other stuff other um ifa is coming up right and and, and the usual time frame for ifa the uh you know show that's usually in germany is early september and so the end of august is when we usually start getting briefed and we start checking out products ahead of time so that that that's all that's all that's all coming, y'all. Stay tuned for gadget news. Are we asking V what he's working on? Yeah, what are you working on, V? Uh, Actually, you know what? I don't care. Cut. cut yeah. the <laughs> Bye. Okay. Uh, uh, let's, let's Matt Damon, we ran out of time. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. What are you working on, V? So I've got some stuff in the works, uh, but but what I, I and to be clear, I did not come on this podcast to plug anything that I'm doing. <laughs> but uh, what I am currently, I've enjoyed in, your pieces, by the way. I, I've seen some you. of your explainer pieces, and it's yeah. nice. And also, I, I bet it must feel nice not to be like doing the craze review dance like uh, Sherlyn is currently doing. Oh, you don't think I missed that? You don't think I missed? Yeah, a crazy I, person? he's offered I to do. help me write my yeah. reviews like a few times now, just like <laughs> as a ghostwriter. Because I want to, I got to keep those those skills sharp. <laughs> but what 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 I am interested in is if anyone watching or listening happens to be a T-Mobile customer and they think they might be affected by the T-Mobile data breach, I'd love to hear what your experiences are. Oh. T-Mobile so far has not really talked about the full scope. They've, they've offered some information about what kind of data was leaked and possibly how many people that affected, but there's still a lot of unclear factors there. So if you've heard from T-Mobile or if you have experiences about trying to change your password, I've heard from some people that that is not a thing you're able to do online. Ooh, some people shoot. are being routed to go to stores to do it, which I'm trying to confirm. Anyway, if you've got a T-Mobile story, I'd love to hear it. Chris.Velasco mm-hmm. at washpost.com. <laughs> I guess Remember, I'll you email can, you. Yeah, you can send me all sorts of messages. So Yeah, just send Velasco fields. Like, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our pop culture picks. Shrillin, I know you're very excited to talk about. Oh my gosh, you all. I saw Shang-Chi or Shang-Chi for people who need to see it phonetically or something in your heads. Uh, (laughs) Shang-Chi and the the Ten Rings uh, at a press preview. I can't talk, I don't think, too much about it. I can say that I watched it. I enjoyed it. I think the reviews are up, aren't they? There is a different embargo that I that I got uh, anyway, um, for for later in the month. But mm-hmm. I will say this: uh, I don't. I, I have a lot of thoughts about it that aren't tech related. But who mm-hmm. cares? You're not always here for tech only. Um, great action scenes, very good action scenes. And mm-hmm. I say this as someone who grew up with consuming Asian cinema. Um, love it, basically love it. Predominantly, so so good. Um, I was blown away from the start. I have a few thoughts on why can't we find other Asian actresses in the world anymore? Um, because Aquafina is not the only one. She's great. I like her a lot. She's an excellent comedian. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, girl, ride that wave of fame and popularity while you can, of course. For sure. This is what, what happens in Hollywood. Others. Like uh, some yeah. people break out and then they're yeah. just cast and everything. And Exactly. Yeah. I'm yeah. kind of not. I'm like, I, I've seen her in the last seven you know, Asian heavy films. I'm I'm good. Mm-hmm. Michelle Yeoh, same thing. You know, like she's also 
the de facto she's, older Asian woman in most things. But she's so great. She still her. kicks ass. Like in oh, yeah. Star Trek she's Discovery, put, she put is her still in everything. Ass. Continue to yeah. be. She was in. She was yeah. She was also in Guardians, by the way. In case y'all didn't realize, so this is kind of weird that she's showing up here. Um, <laughs> like a double character in the MCU, great. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, she kicks ass. Her and Ming Nawen, two of my favorites. But um, again, there's there's more there. Yeah, but also the last act of the show gets a little wonky. But y'all y'all, I'm not gonna spoil too much for you. Mm -hmm. Um, Tony Leung. Oh my God, Tony Leung. The, the so goat. good. The best. Still. Yes. Okay. The best. And finally, it was very gratifying as an Asian person who's bilingual, actually tr quadrilingual. Anyway, lots of lingual. <laughs> wow. To, to watch this and everyone speaking the different languages, more or less is pronouncing everything correctly. Like great, for too great. long, every time I watch a show where someone's supposedly fluent in Chinese does not speak proper. They speak Chinese like Chris Velasco speaks Chinese, basically. Mm -hmm. um, which is, do you want to... Do you want to show off to people how you sound like when you speak Chinese, V? <laughs> and, and the actual pronunciation, which should be, <laughs> like, I, okay. I'm, I'm on the extreme end of pronouncing it correctly right now because I, I did the Chinese accent thing too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> but imagine my pain when I'm watching a movie and I know how I should hear it go. It's like, y'all, if y'all watch a Korean movie or, or other foreign language movie and the one person who supposedly like grew up in america goes like how how low how are you very fluent in english now thanks and it's mm -hmm. just like it's not just an accent thing anyway marvel <laughs> it took marvel stop it video team it took marvel to be to be the one to make something that i felt was satisfying on that front it was so strange. And then everyone spoke Chinese to each other when there was no other English speaking person mm -hmm. in the room, which also so important. Ooh. Like, yeah, yeah. why why do you have to speak English? I don't I don't want to give English? Marvel too much too much credit here. Like, I, well, let's let's wind this back a little because we are uh, way beyond the Well, the I did third... change my mind midway through. Yeah. I will say I did change my mind on that midway through, but I don't want to yeah. go too much into that on our podcast. You can always invite me to your film podcast. Exactly. To talk about this we stuff. are way beyond the the third what what are we now? Like a 25th MCU movie? Like we are in the next wave like the fourth four. wave of yeah, MC mcu they gave us um a, a wonderful what was the the netflix show with the with the that, white dude oh, no. iron fist? oh iron fist. yeah I am do not do not forget yeah. about iron fist like, oh, do no, not don't forget tilda swinton anyway. who i love but should it not sure. be doctor you they, know? they were There's really really dumb to do that anyway i'm glad shang chi like did well for you Shilin. Yeah, i'm yeah, looking yeah. forward to seeing it i hear the choreography is good i love it's this okay. cast the director destin daniel cretton who did short term 12 which is an incredible indie movie i don't think I don't think anybody real like many people don't realize he's an Asian American filmmaker and he's doing mm. some incredible work these days. So I didn't like his last movie. Uh, he did actually two, uh, Just Mercy and The Glass Castle. But Short Term 12 is an incredible film and you will not be able to watch that without crying. As for me, I just want to shout out The Green Knight, a movie I've talked about before, directed by David Lowry. It stars Dave pa uh, Dev Patel, not Dave Patel. Mm -hmm. Dev Patel. It's sort of like him in an Arthurian legend where he is a young knight out to prove himself, um, basically on a quest to prove his masculinity and prove mm -hmm. his heroism. I I love like a good Arthurian legend that's told really well. I don't think it's done. It hasn't been done really well in movies aside from Excalibur, a movie I absolutely adore. And I think this movie is fantastic. And I'm shouting it out now because it is uh, streaming on video on demand as of today. So you could rent it. You can buy it. Um, you don't have to go to the theater. I saw it in the theater, though, and it was incredible to see this thing on the big screen. So it is a wonderful slow burn of a fantasy film. It is not like... It's not Lord of the Rings. It's not like a super straightforward thing, but I think it's beautiful. I think everybody should see it. So check out The Green Knight. That is my pick. Uh, be anything nice. you've been you've been checking out you want to shout out? Nothing Nothing new. I live in the past, <laughs> like many people do. Good. But that has come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is coming quite handy. Uh, so what's been just sort of like sustaining me for a while now is a rewatch uh -huh. of Star Trek The Next Generation. And last night mm -hmm. I watched, when, I forget what the episode was called, but it's the episode where Captain Picard is just forced by his crew to take a vacation on the pleasure planet Risa. Oh, yeah. And he's, 
and he's sort of he he's immediately kissed by a woman when he gets there and gets sucked into this world of intrigue and apparently this whole episode came about because patrick stewart who was dating the actress portraying the woman that he had his romantic uh-huh. liaison with on the planet said the captain picard should do more effing and effing <laughs> fighting and fornicating according uh-huh. to i believe producer uh-huh. iris stephen bear i mean they, they were right exactly yeah. so if you want to watch if you want to watch a, a man of indeterminate age being really grumpy yeah. that he can't read a book but then get sucked into <laughs> a time traveling uh whirling plot of intrigue yeah go watch that episode that's i forget a, what it's a, called though. that's a good episode and if you want to see a really young patrick stewart who's still like bald and everything he's an excalibur as one of the knights mm. that uh they have to solve they have to help so everybody is in that movie that movie is incredible i love excalibur go watch it people um i think that's it folks let's Bring it in for a landing, Sherlyn. Well, that's it for our episode this week, everyone. Thank you, as always, for listening. Our theme music is by game composer Dale North. Our outro music is by our very own Terrence O'Brien. The podcast is produced by Ben Elman. You can find Devendra online at... At Devendra on Twitter and also at the Filmcast podcast at thefilmcast.com. You can find Chris Velasco at his Washington Post email address, chris.velasco at (laughs) washpost.com. But also, where else online can people find you, V? You can find me at Chris Velasco on twitter.com. Wow. Uh, If you have suggestions for Asian actresses that should be in more Hollywood films, please send them to me on Twitter. I am at Sherlyn Lowe, indeed. (laughs) So we're taking next week off from the live stream. So please use that time to email us questions about the new phone season or anything else gadget related at podcast at ingadget.com. Leave us a review on iTunes, please. And subscribe on anything that gets podcasts. And subscribe (laughs) on anything that gets podcasts including Spotify. Okay, we're Woo. clear. And there are just a couple of questions from the <laughs> sure, chat sure. that uh, I want to get to. So um, I don't know if Tim, oh, what is his name? Tim Longson um, has stuck around, but he was asking just around like the end of our last Q&A que- section, <laughs> um, do any phones have the disabled battery charging option mm. so you can use the phone while plugged in to game, for example, for long periods mm. without, with charging turned off so it doesn't wear on the battery? That's a good... I've never seen that. Option. That's a very Anything. good question. Yeah. I want that to exist in everything, but I don't know if any phone I've ever tested that's ever had that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a shame. That is a good idea, though. Mm. I, I wish I could like enable that. Yeah. Huh. Now, would that put more wear on the battery if you just have it plugged in for a long time like that? If you could bypass the battery and just like have like that's the thing. It would require like two separate power systems, maybe, because mm-hmm. I think the way it works now is like just everything goes through the battery and it's easy to just like engineer that. Um it could be interesting. I think that's more like when even the Nintendo Switch, like when you put it in the dock it is still like charging. So what phones do now typically is like there's intelligent charging. You know, if you stick your phone into your charger overnight, mm-hmm. it's not going to charge it up all the way. Like it's going to, it's going to like look like when you typically get up and it will do the bulk of that charging closer to the morning, like as you're getting up. So there are ways they're, get, they're getting around it. Do you know if it still does that intelligent charging if the phone is off? I don't think it can. I'm not sure. That's a good question. I don't, yeah, I, 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 I am not sure if it does so. Phones are never fully off because. But I was going to say, yeah, thing. we're yeah. we don't. A lot of people don't charge their phones when they're off anymore. Yeah, uh, so I'm not sure. <laughs> that is a weird thing that I do. I will turn my phone just completely off. Like I turn my phone off at night. That is. Don't, don't do that. You don't need to do that. I I don't need to do that, but I do. I guess I'm it's going a good to bed. Thing. My phone's going to bed. You get a fresh, like you get a fresh OS, like when you wake up basically so that's something well yeah and that's what i've found because over the last few years like using my phone sometimes i will charge it with the um charge it on and then i'll use it for a a couple of days just because like i'm out or um you know on you know out and about or something i'm not doing my usual rituals like as uh, as if i was at home and i will notice that the battery actually drains faster mm-hmm. if i've had the phone on for a couple of days versus my mm-hmm. usual ritual of turning the phone off every it's a good day it's and, a like, good strategy turning it, off, turning it yeah. on in the morning mm-hmm um so another question from jiffer is um so 
uh, specifically about um, these thing. I don't know how much you can talk about an active investigation from the New- <laughs> from not the New York Times, the Washington Post. <laughs> the other one. An active investigation from the Washington Post, but Jiffer asks, they have a question. It does so T-Mobile sub networks like Mint Mobile, hmm. would they be affected? <clears throat> So as far as anyone is aware right now, because T-Mobile has not said anything publicly, they have not answered any questions that didn't come up in either of the two releases they've issued so far. Uh, from what we understand, MVNOs like Mint, I think Simple Mobile might also use T-Mobile, but, but any sort of, sort of sub-carrier brand that pays for access to T-Mobile's network, we don't believe those are affected. Right now, it looks like it's just people. I say just, but it's still a lot of people. It's... Uh, about 7.8 million people currently who have postpaid accounts, which means you get a bill at the end of each month. Mm-hmm. Um, about 40 million people who applied for credit with T-Mobile at some point, presumably because they wanted to become one of those postpaid customers. And 850,000 prepaid account owners who are sort of affected by this. Mm-hmm. Now, the one thing to point out, well, it, it takes a bit to unpack because the initial reports about all this, which Motherboard published, I believe, on Sunday, they suggested that the hackers had obtained about 100 million records, which is basically twice as much as T-Mobile has admitted to so far. And they also said at the time that that data dump could also include really sort of identifiable device information like IMEIs. And T-Mobile has not really addressed either of those. So if you're a simple mobile, if you're a Mint customer, you're probably fine, but do your best to stay on top of all of the news coming out of this because that investigation that T-Mobile is doing is moving pretty fast. Wow. Okay. So... That's what they do when you go to work for the Washington Post. They just Shut like, up, man. make you just do big data dumps. It's great. So very like professional and on the ball. Um, so <laughs> I think that we're, unless there are any last minute questions, chat, this is your last Woo. couple of minutes to say something. Um, While we that wait for that, I just yeah. wanted to mm-hmm. just do my usual shout out thing to people. Mark Dell, sure. our first the regulars, Mark Dell, D Man, ACBC, Will So, uh, Jedi Mind Trick on You. Uh, I remember seeing Neutron Star is a newish name, but becoming mm-hmm. quickly mm-hmm. regular. Um, Drew Carmokar is here too. It's good to see you all. Jonathan Anderson, if I haven't shouted you out, is uh, we see you. It's so nice to see all of you all, you know, coming back. But we also appreciate the people who are new or newish to our community who are coming back. Like I said, Neutron Star. We got the Tim, we got Tim you mentioned just now. Uh seeing then, Jiffer and Gabriel more often. Jiffer, too. Yeah. Mm. Gabriel definitely. Uh seeing more often today. We got Tame Shursaf, I think. Um Nick Summers. Who is also former in Gadget, like V, Trader V. Well, you um, got it. Okay. Okay. Um, you can't, you can't call have... him that. You can call me Trader V all you want, but you can't yeah. call him Trader Nick. Nick wasn't a trader. I know. I'm short. not going to do that. Nick is too Wait, cool. actually, is... no, that's the next Photoshop that we need. We need Chris Velasco's head on Trader Joe's body. <laughs> what? Oh, no. Well, Mark, uh, you don't have to do it, but I feel yeah, like don't, just because don't, Ben said it, Mark You don't have it. to do that, Mark. <laughs> if you want to, fine, but you don't have to do that, Mark. <laughs> Hi also to Sopku, who is uh, S-O-B-K-O-U, who is also active in the chat today. We we appreciate all of you coming to you know hang out with us. Again, uh, I, I know some of you are disappointed that we won't have a live stream next week, but we're taking a break. Or an, this... or an episode. Yeah, n- yeah no, no episode, yeah. No, no live stream. And Unless something yeah. big happens, and I'll just like put something together, but yeah, most likely. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly um but but we we th- you know email us we want to also when you email us uh we will probably follow up but if you want to say ahead of time whether we can use your question and your name and your preferred pronouns uh you know in our show later on so it saves us a little bit of got, time on the back and forth yeah we got a really interesting email from someone who works at a post office in alaska and we're going to um, be talking way more about that in mm-hmm. a future episode, but we've got way too much phone stuff to talk about for the next couple of weeks. So, so many phones. Yeah. Uh, hi to CF542, who is new here and has not seen any of our live casts before. Yay, thank Welcome. you for joining They're us. They're fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hit rewind if, you, if you're missing it. Yeah. We're wrapping up now. Yeah. We're wrapping up now, but it's always easy to um, hit rewind. rewind on mm-hmm. stuff. Go down your uh, timeline. I don't know. Do you actually hit rewind anymore? <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, well, yeah, 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 you can't dekind rewind, but you can you can just press back on the timeline, whatever mm. it is. <laughs> so I think we're just about done for today. Thanks, everybody. This stream comes to you via our video team, which is led by Kyle Mock with Julio Barrientos and Luke Brooks. But again, it's powered by everyone in the chat. You're the one who makes it fun. You just shout out interesting questions that we wouldn't have thought to think about or wouldn't have thought to talk about otherwise. And so if you stuck around this long, you know about gadgets, you know about algorithms, rate the show five stars on iTunes. It's an easy way to help other people find us and it helps the, the show go. It's so silly that um, this is still the standard, but it is the standard. Just rate us five stars it would be really appreciated and we'll see you not next week, but the week after. Thanks y'all. Bye. Bye.